Wake up, Lincoln. Come on, it's 6 o'clock. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. It's time for Early Break. Brought to you by Gaina Trucking. Live from Lincoln, America. Here's Jake Sorensen. Did seem kind of meh. Husker Online, Steve Sipple. Surprisingly good. And longtime college football assistant coach, Bill Bush. I want to buy a couple ducks. I'm bringing two ducks to to the office. This is Early Break. Good morning, happy Friday to you, Steve Sipple, Jake Swords in the early break, Bill Bush out today, back on Monday. We missed Bill. I didn't hear from him yesterday. I did briefly. You did? Yeah, that's right. I heard. He didn't call me. Just text. A couple texts. Short texts. No. Nothing long. Just checking did, in, see I how things were. I don't think I. I don't even think he called. Wow. Feel, you feel left out at all or not? I. I don't. Okay. You can live with that. Yes. As you point out, we have problems in the show of, of, I don't know, envy, of when people with the phone call or the text from each other. Do I? No, you no. you say please don't text me at all. Right. I prefer if you don't call me or text right. me. Right, I don't take it personally at all. Just so you know, and I would rather I not hear God, from people. Talk to me. <laughs> just stay away. I prefer if you just left me alone in silence and call me only if it was very urgent. If it's urgent. Um, good morning. Good morning to you. It's Friday. It is Friday. The personnel report is Josh is here. Yes, he's without a hood. Um. No stocking cap today either. The no. high is 72 today, by the way. Is that right? It should be a glorious day in Lincoln, Nebraska. Glorious. Good. Good. Glorious day here. So I hope people get out and, and, and golf, get outside. Maybe I, ride your motorcycle. I won't be golfing today because I might be in the hospital. You never know. You never know. Nope. I, I, you've done a good job of handling this. I have. I'm, I'm still here. I've been here all week long, and I will hopefully not be here next week if things are going according to plan. Right. So that's where we're at. And that would then that there's would, no breaking news because there's no baby yet. So no breaking news this morning. It would necessitate if it does happen this weekend that Nick Sainert would join AKA us. Big Swim. <laughs> I think he's better known now as Big Swim compared to Nick Sainert. So I hope he's okay. I hope he's okay. That's with just that. the way it's gonna be. He can't control that. That's the way we operate, and he's Big Swim. That's Do the, the way other shows call him Big Swim? Uh no, they call him Nick. Sometimes I think A D will occasionally call him Swim. 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 So it's caught on. It's caught on. Gorgeous day. Yes, a lot going great. on. We have a wonderful. lot to talk about we today. We do. God, we yesterday. will get to a lot of audio from Matt Rule and Donovan Royola as the show goes on in this first segment. But what do we do on Friday mornings every day? Every oh, yeah. We do the roll call. Oh, my it God. It is time for the roll call. Sponsored by our friends at Madsen's Bowling and Billiards, just south of 48th and Holdridge. The great place to start off your Friday. They got great food at EJ's Bar and Lounge. Hamburgers. Wings, all the types are in it. They got bowling, they got billiards, they got darts. Sounds good. It's a great place to be. Yeah, it's a it's a very warm place. So if you would help us out, please shoot us a text at 402-464-5685. Your name, your age, where you're listening from, and, and maybe your all-time favorite running back. All time. <laughs> okay. Husker running back or running back in uh, general? Just, just running back in general. Can I give you mine? Yes. Barry Sanders. Is it? Hands down. <laughs> really? I would not have guessed that. Wasn't even a dolphin. I know that's the boring answer, but guess what? No, it's I don't not. care. No, Barry, that's not why. I, I will find myself once every two months probably going into a Barry uh, Sanders highlights package because I, I just can't believe, rabbit hole. I can't believe it was real. The way he ran the football, the way he was just, just, just a- embarrassing people in the NFL is incredible. I'm I'm a little surprised that you would feel you need to apologize for that one. That's well, it's a, good, a, it's a, a good boring one. answer. You think it'd be more creative? Say, oh, say someone like a Ricky Williams, possibly. Josh. What? Guess Josh's. Walter Payton. <laughs> I didn't even turn around. He's a Bears fan. Well, well, of course, it's Walter Payton. Walter a Payton. Good one. Yeah. I, I I wonder who I'd pick. Who I'd pick? Earl Campbell. Dickerson. I like Dickerson. You're right. I don't know that I have a Marcus a, Allen. Maybe no. No, okay. no, 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 right. not at all. I don't know that I have a defined favorite. Um, Earl Campbell always comes to mind. As far as, far as Nebraska running backs go, it was Rozier. 
So I'll just go there. Okay, Mike Rozier. All right. To the roll call, 402-464. They are climbing it. They are flying it, by the way. 402-464-5685. Where are you listening from? Here we go. Leroy is with us. Leroy is in Molex. I'm not sure where Molex is at. Uh, age 37 this morning. Jethro in McCook, age 50. No running back for him. That's fine. Uh, Kent in Lincoln on the, on the way to Ray, Colorado, by the way, age 60 right now. All right, they're rolling Chuck in. Chuck Foreman, his favorite running back, uh, Jay Foreman's father. Chuck Foreman's a great it's one. a pretty good answer right I wonder there. if my brother Martin, who was a big Vikings fan, would have said Chuck Foreman. You know who would say Chuck Foreman? Longtime ticket personality, Tom Stevens. Massive. Woody. Oh, Huge Chuck Foreman fan. Favorite player of all time. Is Chuck that right? Foreman. Is that right? Let's run back. Play, favorite player of all time is Chuck Foreman. Nels in Big Fork, Montana, age 47. Amon Green, our own Amon Green. Amon Green would be was high on my list. in the studio. I, I just, I, yeah, Amon was incredible. I remember him vividly as a freshman when he first went on to the first string. It was epic. Matt, age 50, great answer. It says in South Lincoln, Bo Jackson, his favorite running back. Yeah, that was, he was a freak. Was too bad injuries shortened his career. It could have been an amazing career, but still yeah. was a good career. Should yeah. have been better, yeah. uh, but amazing player. Uh, railroader Matt in Lincoln says Adrian Peterson, his favorite running back. These are great ones. These are great ones. By good the way, job. Hey, good job, everybody. By the uh, way, age 39 on that one. Big Fun at 48th and Prescott says uh, his favorite is Tom Rathman. Big, running these back. Are great. This is great. This is great. Keep going. Pecan Pie, age 52 in Stonebridge Creek. Priest Holmes, the former Chiefs running back, his favorite of all time. This is interesting. The wide variety of names we're getting. The wide variety of running backs we're getting. Keep going. Priest Holmes once caused me to cry, by the way. I was in a Dolphins game in 2002 in KC. Dolphins lost 48-31. Fans keep chanting, we're going to beat the hell out of you. You. You, you and little Jake. You, you, you. And I'm 11 years old, and my dad's like, don't cry. He's right. I shouldn't be crying at that game, but the Priest Holmes was tearing the Dolphins apart. Did your dad game. tell you not to cry? He's like, don't cry. There's nothing. You just don't do did that. Did he drop the just, it's just a game? <laughs> he did say that. <laughs> he was right, but it was that was tough. My first ever NFL game, the Dolphins got pounded, which should have been a sign for how life was going to go for that team. <laughs> And it has been. For how your life was going to go. <laughs> yeah, for me, <these> Dolphins fan. <laughs> Sean and Eagle says, I am hip, his favorite running back. Oh, of my all God. Time. That's a good one. Age 61, by the way. Josh in Webb City, Missouri, recently turned 48, listening from the treadmill. Barry Sanders, top running back all right. of all time. From the treadmill. From the I treadmill. That. I love that. I love Brian that. in Toledo, age 26, also says Adrian Peterson. AD, get, or AD, a, Adrian AP. Peters, AP, getting some love. Man, yes. he was. He was awesome. He was a beast at his peak. Mark and Eagle uh, says Lawrence Phillips, hands down. All right, Phillips was Phillips was it's, you know the debate at Nebraska. It doesn't really rage on, but I believe it's a debate. It's either Phillips or Rozier. I, I mean, Amon's right in right in the. I'd say even Amon might say right behind those guys. I think I think it's always either Phillips or Rozier. Phillips or Rozier. Big Bird in Columbus. Not that's not Bird. Big Bird's dad. Big Bird. I think it's Bird's dad. Big Bird. He says Earl Campbell, his favorite of all time. Good answer there. Former Oiler. Real I think Bill answer. would like that one also yeah. as an Oilers fan back in the day. Mike in Lindsburg, Kansas, age 41. Also, Barry Sanders, smart man. Sanderson in Holland says Tony Dorsett, his favorite of all. Wow, time. there's nobody. At Sa- Wait, Sanderson. Sanderson. Well, he's a Cowboys fan. We know that. Sanderson. Nobody had said Tony Dorsett, and that's a great one. When he was at Pitt, he was an he was iconic at Pitt. You know that. You're too young to remember that, but me and Sandy... Me and Sandy remember those days. He, okay. was a, he was a, well, he won the Heisman Trophy. No big deal. No, no big whoop. I can't tell if this one's facetious or not, but uh, Ryan in Delaware says he's 39. His favorite is Napoleon Kaufman of the Raiders from the early 2000s. Oh, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that might be legit. He was more of a, a fullback and running back, if I recall. He was ah. a, kind of a hybrid of that position. Okay. Uh, we got uh, Russ in the Highlands. We got Les, age 71. It says Amon Green. About favorite. this. Good. I'm AG. glad Amon's getting some love. Uh, East Lincoln West says Bo Jackson, by the way, age 40 for East Lincoln West. Okay. Uh, Nick from St. Louis, 41st birthday today. Hello. Whoa. Hello. Nick, wait a second. Nick? Nick from St. Louis. From St. Louis. Today is his 41st birthday. I wonder what part of St. Louis he's from. I know. Hey, Nick, I know, I ask because I, I know St. Louis a little bit. My brothers went to school. Both went to law school at Washington U, so I spent a lot of time there visiting. What? What do you think a 41-year-old from St. Louis is a, his favorite running back ever? Okay. Is? There's, there should be a pretty obvious one. Yeah, it's um, it's the dude that played for St. Louis. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> That's why I asked the question. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that. He's well, running back. Yeah. Um, I can say it. There's probably two options. You, you could say either Steven Jackson who was really good. But really, Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk. Was the name I was looking Marshall, for. And that's the correct one, right. Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk. Uh, Mike North Lincoln says, Amon Green. Oh, that's three now for we're getting Yeah, we're getting some Amon Green love. Kenny Carey and McCook, age 59. Barry Sanders. David from RenewYourAuto.com says, Roger Craig. He's on his new recliner, by the way, this morning. Wait a second, really? He's watching the show, watching the show from his David? new recliner at his house. Really? Age 54, Roger Craig, his favorite running back. Eric and Hickman says, Marcus Allen. Evan and Seward, age 31, Rex Burkhead, his favorite running This is back. amazing. I'll tell you what's amazing about this I did not expect is just the wide variety. This I love this name. Uh, Ed from Lincoln, age 45, Sean Alexander. That was a dude for the Seahawks. Yeah, he was. was a Alabama Crimson Tide. Right. Then he goes to Seattle and just tears it up mm -hmm. in Seattle. Uh, Mitten, Arkansas, Roger Craig, TC in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, age 74, didn't give me a running back. That's okay. That's fine. There. That's 100% fine. Uh, Jesse Milford, age 40, Edgerin James. God dang. How about that name? Uh, Jesse and Lincoln, Jerome the Bus Pettis. This is, be this is beautiful. Uh, Tony in Fort Bragg says Amon Green. Joel in Wisconsin says Adrian Peterson. Kenny in Lincoln, the ticket's very own AG. I think AG's leading the way He's right now. Way, He's got yeah. six or seven He's at this point. Way, yeah. Bearded Ben in Holton, Kansas. Mike Allstott, more of a fullback than a running back, but still, this he is, did run the ball. I did not, when I said running back, I did not anticipate that we get this sort of variety and, and this sort of response. It's pretty good. Yeah. Travis and Ankeny, a, I'm on green. That's now seven or eight. He's heading to the fields right now, by the way, farming. Is he? Good job. How about that? Go get Panama, it. Doug, and Peth. Uh, 72 years old for Doug, 67 for Beth in Boquete, Panama. They say Gail Sayers. Oh, somebody should say Gail Sayers. I'm glad they did. Omaha's own Gail Sayers. Yeah, somebody should Kansas. say Gail yep. Sayers. Yep. Uh, Bears, great. The Hammer says Walt, uh, in Walton says Earl Campbell. We've got Willard in Republican City, Nebraska. Didn't give me a running, did, running did, Have we had Walter Payton by anybody but Josh? I don't think so. That yeah. surprises yeah. me. Nope, I haven't. Uh, Dale. <laughs> Someone said, I thought Sips would be Derrick Henry, a.k.a. the big horse. I mean, I like him, but I... I'm older, and I, there's so many in my wheelhouse. He's your friend. He's my big horse friend. <laughs> yes, he is your big horse friend back from that wonderful moment back in the day. I, yeah, there's so many that come to mind for me. It's I'm th First of all, thank you to people for narrowing it to one. I just have a hard time narrowing it to one. What do you think Zonk in South Lincoln's favorite running back of all time is <laughs> Larry. Larry Zonka. Yes, Dolphins great. My dad's favorite player of all time. Also. Is that your dad's favorite yes, player? Yes, Larry Zonka. But how could, how could he not be? That was a dude's dude at running back. And Mercury Morris, too. Though. Yeah, well, Larry was more of the hammer. Yeah, he was a hammer. He was a hammer. And I wasn't even alive. I know that, though. I watched film back in the day. Uh, a few more here. They're, they're roll. I can't do it all day, but they, they are absolutely rolling in. Harley Pete says Roger Craig. Craig, our first Emmett Smith Submission That's a there. good one. That's a good one. Uh, Robert Smith. How about that from the That's old who, the old Vikings running back? Really? That's from Scott in Minnesota. It makes okay. sense there. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, let's see. Dustin Beatrice says Mike Allstott. That's two for Allstott now. Fullback. Running back. Uh, Craig in Berlin, Ohio says Derek Brown. Favorite running back. There's a name. I haven't heard that one for a long time. That's, in the, that's a former Nebraska great. Derek Brown. Went and went and played for the Saints. Maybe somebody else, but I remember him with the Saints. Uh, we got Kurt in Aurora, Gail Sayers, I am hip from Boone and Firth. We've got Joe P in Lincoln. He says Thurman Thomas. Jeez, this is amazing. That's a good one there. It's Bill's a really great. good one. It's a really good one. Uh, Barry Sanders again. Marcus Dupree says uh, Dale. Still no Walter Payton here on this list. John in Des Moines says uh, Jerome Bettis. You know, he's a Steelers fan. We know yeah. that John's a Pittsburgh fan. John, makes thank sense. you for joining us. Two, two straight. We have not heard Christian Okoye on the, on the list. Amazing. This is amazing. Very good one there. This is amazing. Edrin James from Dustin Lake, Alfred, Florida. Jim Brown from Chris. Our first Jim, Jim Brown. Brown should be mentioned, and he was good. How about Kellen and Sutherland? Says Warwick Dunn. That was a good player too. Warwick little, Dunn, little, little running back for the Bucks and little Falcons. Good back. player. Uh, <laughs> Vince, age forty four, says OJ Simpson. Too soon. R.I.P. And OJ Simpson passed away yesterday, age seventy six. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we're doing this. By the way, that's right. Look, Reggie Bush from somebody. Reggie USC Bush. Reggie Bush. Yeah. These are amazing. The There's guys that, names. yeah, the guys that get left off. Uh, first texter. I want to see the first texter to get this. This is a challenge to the texters. 
Mark Van Egan, who do you play for? I can't help you. No, I know you can't. I, I want to see what Texas NFL can. team? Yeah, yeah, NFL. Mark Van Egan, great running back for the Bengals. Nope. Was my guess. No. Has anybody got it on the text line? Uh, let's see. We're asking, we're asking for, we're, I want to see who gets this. Mark Van Egan? Mark Van Raiders? Egan. Yes, bam. Okay. Who got it? Several people. Okay. <laughs> right, he flooded job. in there. So. All right, good, good, good. Um, I don't want to make sure, I make sure I don't, I don't skip YouTube. Then we'll move on, I promise. People, the roll call is just so popular. Yes. So popular. Okay, here we go. Uh, YouTube, we got Houston Husker. That's Greg uh, in Houston. Matt in Jacksonville, Florida. That's Matt, age 52. Dustin in Fayetteville, Arkansas on YouTube. We got... Walter in Delco, Pennsylvania. This is yeah. Eric Dickerson. I hear from Walter a lot. Where are you getting all these pictures of me, Walter? <laughs> he scares me. amazing pictures of you. Yeah. Uh, Terry in Columbus says hey, he's 66 years old. Justin is on the te- on the YouTube chat. Also, Owen in Lincoln. Like Dan Alexander. That was That's a good one. How about that? He was a hammer back. He was, he was good. Nobody said Carell. And, and no one said for Carell. And I still only, I didn't see any Walter Payton on the list. No Walter We had Payton. like 150 people text. And I didn't see any Walter Payton. Well, Coulter was sort of um uh, a low key favorite for me. I, I like was, I like the Buck. Yeah, I, I like Buck. He was interesting, and I thought Buck was an interesting running back to me because at Nebraska he was a bigger back. I wouldn't call him a speed back. Then he went to the NFL. I thought he I thought he dropped some weight and got faster in the NFL. I mean, lasted. That's for a while, just my perception. So. Yeah. Uh, Eddie George from Unbiased Boxing Talk on YouTube. We got Bolt that says the late LP. Okay, and okay. Uh, also. Uh, Matt in Jacksonville says Terrell Davis, his favorite running back. Those well, are great Broncos games. Great. Hey, I can I there just salute the there Breakers you go. right now? That was now? great. Well, good topic on that one. Yeah, I mean, back. salute the Breakers for coming through so well on that topic. My God. That is uh, the roll call sponsored by our friends at Madsen's Bowling and Billiard. Stop by today just south of 48th and Holdridge. Great food at EJ's Bar and Lounge. And again, bowling, billiards, darts. All sorts of arcade games. It's the place to be. And karaoke, You know what that way. sounds like? What? Friday. Sounds like a Friday night, yeah. doesn't it? Quickly, uh, one thing on Idle Chit Chat before we get to the Matt Rule Yeah, do audio. some Idle Chit Chat. I got to give a shout out to the Kansas City Royals. Seven straight wins. Sip, they had nine runs in the first inning yesterday. They beat the Astros 13-3. to They're 9-4. and four. You're yelling right now. I am yelling because it, it's been a while since the Royals were any good. They've been horrible. Yes. I'm um, straight up horrible uh-huh. the last three years. 100 plus losses. That's Se- terrible. Seven straight wins? Seven straight for the Royals, all at home. They swept the White Sox in four games, the Astros in three. I wonder how they're drawn. If the, if- uh, the crowds aren't quite where they want to be yet, but if they keep winning, they will show up. It's been chilly, probably. Yeah, it's not that bad. They'll, they'll be there. They'll be there. So yeah. shout out to KC. And by the way, Husker baseball on the road this weekend at Rutgers. Rutgers for a three-game series starting today. Big series for Nebraska. All the Big Ten series are big for Nebraska. Sears on the mound. Brett Sears, who, by the way, was the uh, the pitcher of the week. He had a complete game shutout against Ohio State last Friday night here six, in Lincoln. Six and O oh is Sears. Is that any good? Yes. 1.14 <laughs> ERA is Sears. That is all-American material right uh, now. He's Pitching like it. Yes, for sure. Anything else? Idle Chit Chat? Want to move on? Yeah, let's move on. That's Idle Chit Chat sponsored by our friends at Newton's Lawn Care. Please call or text Andrew at 402-440-6297 and 50% off your first fertilizer application this spring. Okay, Sip, we got a scrimmage tomorrow in Nebraska football. You won't be able to watch it and the media won't watch this. Is all. It's closed to the media, uh-huh. right? Yes. Closed? It's closed. But uh, there's no there, And there's no availability after practice. Okay. Well, we did hear from Matt Rule and Donovan Raiola yesterday. They both talked after practice. Right. And, of course, you know, Matt Rule, as you mentioned yesterday, likes to talk. He, he's not giving you a short uh, – he is the opposite of, opposite of Bill Belichick. It's funny they had Belichick here last week for the mm-hmm. coaches' clinic because him and Rule are, are very opposite in how they do media. Matt Rule will talk forever. Belichick will just mumble a couple words and move on. Frost was more like Belichick. Yes, he was. Who was before Frost? Mike, Mike Riley, Riley would go on and on. On he, he'd tell and you on. every injury at length. He would go through the injuries and then look at a beat writer and say, Did I miss anybody? <laughs> Did I miss anybody? Yeah. Um, Bo was had his moments. Mm, yeah. There, there were times he could be pretty good, and then there was times he was moody. Let's put it that yeah, way, right? He he was. Would, you would describe Bo as moody. Um, we don't have to go through them all. Bill Callahan was professional. He was professional. He was always the same. And he was pretty good. And he would greet the media corps with a with a line that I always found to be sort of interesting. 
he would he would come upon us after practice, look at the group and say, "What are y'all working on?" <laughs> Every day, all <laughs> the time, all the time. He said it, he'd say it a lot. Yeah, what are we working on? And then we'd ask him the appropriate question. Smart. Well, you did ask the question to Matt Ro- Matt Rule about that we discussed the separation at quarterback that we discussed. Y- yes, I don't have your question on here. I just have that's one hundred percent fine. We didn't, we didn't cut up your question to Matt Rule, but just assume you not. You asked about separation at quarterback between Kalen Raiola and uh, Heinrich Harburg, right? Yeah, interesting that you put Kalen first on well, that I, list. Well, I, I, it's the first one that came to my mind. Right. Alphabetical order. Yes, how about that. Even though Harburg should be first in that. <laughs> Harper, Kalen, and Raiola. Well, here was Matt Rule's response to, it wasn't are you looking for separation? Here's his response to that from yesterday. Um, yeah, well, yeah. I, I'm always looking for I mean, I'm always looking for separation, which means because that means one guy's doing a great job, and then usually what happens is the next guy catches him. You know, we're all, you know, he, he realizes, oh, I better pick it up. When you play with a great player, I'm not saying I'm not calling anyone a great player. I'm mm-hmm. saying when you play with a great player, or you play with someone who's doing things that you're not doing, it usually focuses forces you then to catch up. So like the first day, um, you know, we have two freshman quarterbacks, kind of a unique deal, right? Uh, it used to not be unique, but um, you know, one guy comes out, flips the protection one day. The next guy, we, we have quarterbacks doing things in the protections that I haven't had someone do in 11 years, you know, in college football. Um, so it just kind of, it kind of builds a new normal, if that makes sense, right? Like you're doing something at a high level, I catch you. So yeah, you know, I, I, my job is to make sure that all the quarterbacks, all three and all five, um, we're not, not here to pick the starter. We're trying to make them all good enough to be the starter. We're trying to get them as good as go. possible, but separation shows that someone's achieving. And usually when you point it out, other guys, you know, start to follow. There's a good diplomatic answer. Yeah, see, we our, our discussion was, will an answer like that cause some consternation with the fan base? Did it cause consternation? No, because answer, he, he answered it very well. Yes. Like you said, diplomatic. There. Yeah, 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 and I, I mean, let's not, I don't want to act like I operate in a vacuum. I hear, I, I, I'd like to think I know have a pretty good feel about certain things in that program. And I have a pretty good handle on this. It's like Mike, Mike Schaefer said, Mike Schaefer of Husker 24 seven. That's right. He said that, you know, it's Dylan's job. I mean, until it's not Dylan Riola. And that's, that's, I'm operating like that. And I'm hearing that and he's, he's having, he's having a good, he's having a good, we'll call it camp. No, we're not going to call it camp. Cause I call August camp camp What's this, this is thing? a good spring he's having a good spring and i think if they did play today if they had a game he would be the starter and i think it would go pretty well uh, now a lot goes into that they play calling and you know offensive line play yeah, and sure. all that but i think dylan would i think dylan would play well i i don't say it enough i think about it a lot i don't say it enough on this show i am very confident in in Dylan Raiola. I don't worry about him. I guess I don't talk about him a lot because I don't worry about him. I don't worry about his progress. I don't worry that I don't worry that this is all too much for him. None of that. I and I just say same with Danny Daniel Kalen, to be honest. Um it just happens that Dylan Dylan's got more talent. I mean he's, he's really talented. So they're gonna scrimmage tomorrow and I would love to see it, I would pay <laughs> hundreds of dollars to see that. You talk to Keith Mann. You know Keith. I'd love to see what that picture looks like. I have a feeling it'd look pretty good. He has receivers. They, the quarterbacks, have receivers to throw to. You would think they're getting good protection because it's a veteran offensive line, one of the most veteran offensive lines in the college game right now. There's the thing about Dylan and the young quarterbacks is they do have pieces around them. They're not, you know, it's not, Nebraska doesn't have overwhelming talent like it did in the 90s. It doesn't. I remember, Jake, I remember walking over there sometimes and we saw a lot of practice and we covered a lot more practice back then because back then, for instance, in August, they do two a day. So we would go in the morning and go at night and we'd see some of the practice in the morning and some of the practice at night. And I, and I would, 
I just have these flashbacks of going over there sometimes and watching them line up and going, my God, my God, they're loaded. They are loaded. Well, I'm glad you at that point appreciated that. I did. Notice that. Like, this is not granted. This is not guaranteed. There was a time, one time, this is very random, but it did strike me. They lined, they, they lined up. They looked so good. It was Willie Miller at fullback. And, they, and on this day, they had Alexander behind him. Think about that picture. Oof. That's a big, but that's a big bunch of big Dan, yeah, and w- big Willie, and and you know that I think they had Tracy Wistrom at tight end. Um, it was just I just was looking out there and going, man, they're they're just they're just loaded. I don't, you won't do that right now. No, I mean, you won't go over there and see that. You don't. But anyway, what else you got sound wise? Well, there, there's a long answer. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but there was a question about. The quarterbacks working to eliminate mistakes. Yes, I like this discussion. So I'm I'm going to fast forward to Matt Rule talking about eliminating low lights. Right. right. Instead of you know focusing on the highlights, eliminating low lights. Yes. Here's Matt Rule on that uh, from yesterday post practice. You know, like everyone's everyone's waiting at home for the for us to put out something from practice today. They want to see the highlights. The highlights haven't been the reason why we've been, haven't been to a bowl game in the last six years. It's the low lights. <laughs> And so I'm more of a, hey, what are the defects, eliminate the defects type of a coach. And so, yeah, we have some unbelievable wow plays. But let's talk about the amount of sacks we're giving up or the big plays we're giving up or the missed assignments that we have or the missed, missed opportunities in two minutes. So also making sure that we're coaching the what not to do and what to avoid. Um, that's, that's really the step for the quarterbacks because both guys can make dynamic plays. But our season will be dependent upon how many times we beat ourselves on a plane, how many times we don't. And that's that's really what you worry about with freshman quarterbacks or what you have to teach for freshman quarterbacks. There it is. Uh, he said a mouthful. It was pretty apparent last year. I mean, that was – we talked about how how many turnovers the quarterbacks had. Yeah. Both fumbling and, and interceptions in general. I it think was there's a 25. It was a major problem. The number's 25. That's That can't happen. And he's right. That's – that was the reason why you didn't go to a bowl game. There's too many turnovers. That was number one reason. That was it. I mean, yeah. they're not the only thing. But yeah, numero uno, hands yeah. down, no questions. It was asked. the number one reason. So yeah, they had 31 turnovers. They're minus 17. It's not <laughs> it, minus 17. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's obtuse. Minus 17 is obtuse. Now, it wasn't just that though, and that in in rules, not just talking about eliminating turnovers. He's talking about eliminating defects in, in general. Eliminating defects. A lot of football is that. I say that all the time. There's so much that can go wrong on a one play. There's so much can go wrong over the course of a game. It's mind-numbing how many things can go wrong. It's, which is why I, re- I really, it's really something to behold when a team clicks like Michigan did oh, last yeah. year. They were a machine. They didn't seldom had things go wrong. In any phase of the game, right? They just didn't, you didn't watch them and go, oh my God, what happened on that play? That just, just didn't happen very often. There's a few games, Maryland, you know, they had to squeak past Maryland. They didn't look that good against Maryland. Um, but yeah, eliminating defects. We live in this, we live in a world where it's all, a lot of it's social media highlights, Right. That's what we that's what we watch and we judge a lot off that. We we judge a lot of we judge a lot of recruits. What do we do? We go to their huddle highlights. Mm-hmm. Highlights. Yep. Highlights. Show me the badge. Yeah, well, and I guarantee you, Bill would say and coaches would say, Yeah, I do want to see bad. I want to see what, what bad looks like. And I want to see how they respond to bad. So yeah. I mean, what it comes down to with, with these young quarterbacks to me. The first thing I'd watch, okay, if 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 I were were allowed to watch this scrimmage tomorrow, you know what I'd watch? Number one, how many picks? Okay. How many picks today? How many interceptions? That's probably the thing I'd look at closest. Well, how many near interceptions? How many balls that could have been intercepted? Should have been intercepted. This is kind of a shot at last year's situation, but <laughs> how many muffed snaps for Nebraska football at quarterback? Dropped snaps. That was a problem last year by a certain quarterback that did not end the year as the quarterback for the Huskers. Good point. I forgot about that problem. But that's, Col- a, that's a defense. How about the Colorado game? Yeah. Was that's, that a problem that, that, in that game? Yes. <laughs> Just was that a problem was. against Minnesota? But it was, was. was it a problem in general the whole season? Yeah, it was. I, yeah. I've kind of blocked that out. I've kind of blocked that out. We've, we have seen problems 
even dating back to you know to Mike, you know, early Scott Frost, excuse me, with quarterback center exchanges. Mm-hmm. I thought with Sims, that's who you're talking about. I am. I thought with Jeff Sims, I just thought it was a lack of focus. Right. That's why it's important to see what's the focus level. If 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 it's something you don't even think about, it's just natural. Hey, there's no problem with the snaps or the handling of the snaps. It's it should be just basic football one on one. Right. You do this since you were a kid. If you're a quarterback, taking the ball from center. Yeah. But or, it wasn't it was never that or easy. In the gun, you know, for a couple was, years. He was in the gun. A couple of years it was like, okay, let's get a good snap here. It was, it was always a, a first thought. Yeah. How's the snap gonna get corralled? No, that's a Which really is a horrible thought. That's a great point. I mean, Nebraska went through it before Sims, is what you're they referring did. Yes, to. This is, too. this is prior to Sims. That's just basic. That's just kind of the something basic that should be okay. Right. You shouldn't have to think about that, but, but Nebraska did. But the, you know what happened to a, one great team this year? Alabama had snap problems they they, a couple times. The Auburn game, which they won, mm-hmm. they should have lost they the did. game because of bad snaps. It hurt against Michigan, in Michigan also. In the, yeah, in the, Two massive games. They won one of them and lost the other one. In that game in the Rose Bowl, it hurt them. Yes. So it's not just Nebraska that's had that problem. But still, you, you think at a, at a program like Alabama under Saban, that was that was shocking to see. What else? Shocking. What else did we talk about yesterday um, we wanted to hear from Rule? We discussed this. <laughs> um, but we're curious about the offensive line, possibly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And we're gonna have more O line conversation in hour two. I hope what you have here is Matt Rule. He was asked, "Who are the second tier, third tier offensive linemen who Got could it. make a push for starting role?" Well, here's Matt Rule responding to that question. Guys have been running with the second team. You know, Mike, Mike has been running with the second team. Tyler Canock's been, you know, done done a great job. Um, uh, you know, Justin Justin Evans. You know, he while well, he's starting at guard, also goes in sometimes at center and does a fantastic job. You know, Canock's got a guy I've been really pleased with just watching him sort of uh, move around. Um, Lutowski, while he, he might be running with the ones at guard, when he goes out to tackle, I think he does a fantastic job, and so. Um, you know, Mashake Shack was doing a great job. He's got a little banged up. Hopefully he'll be back here soon. Uh, Ruquan um, making the transition, still learning all the nuances. But once it's all figured out, I think he's going to be really a good player. So probably missing some guys there. I don't mean to, but I just think that whole group of those guys um, and any of them at any point, I think could walk in and, and probably play and play really well. All right. Matt Rule on the on the depth at this point, offensive line. It was informative because, in I mean – Inherent, I guess, in the question would be an assumption of who's starting. So the, I think that the questioner was would assume that Teddy Prohaska starting at left tackle. He's probably assuming that Ben Scott starting at center, and Bryce Benhart at right tackle. I don't know if you can make a. I think you could make an assumption on Justin Evans is going to start at guard, and he's no longer going by Justin Evans Jenkins. Just Evans. Yes, Justin Evans. It's just Justin Evans. I, I think again. Prohaska, left tackle, Justin Evans. My guess would be left guard, either guard, doesn't matter. Ben Scott, center. Now, the, the other guard position, I would think that Mazuka would rise to the top. Rule mentioned Latovsky, who's who runs with the ones. I just think there's going to be a battle there. And maybe, maybe Sam Sledge would be in that battle. He wasn't mentioned. You know, he didn't mention Gunnar Gatula. Rule didn't mention Gunnar Gatula, but he's a you know he'd be a, a tackle prospect. Um, he didn't mention Jacob Hood. Um, probably not. Just you know the Georgia transfer. He looked. I, you know I did put eyes on him the other day. He has, I'd say, moved his body more towards being ready. But again, Rule didn't mention him. That doesn't always mean anything. Uh, it could just mean he forgot him. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, Canock. Interesting. I and mean, Canock didn't look ready to me last last year at this, what, what, or last summer, last summer. But he does look a little better now. Tyler, remember Canock? Yes, came from Utah. I do. Came from came from Utah. That's right. So there's your update from post practice. We get some some audio from Don and Rayola in the seven o'clock hour when we when we come back. When we when we come back next segment, we're going to give an update on day one of the Masters. Oh, we are, huh? Yeah, that's right. Get your hush tones and get your... We don't have to do the hush tones. We were called goons yesterday. Some people liked it, though. I was told they there's did. some people liked it out there. They so did? Masters update <laughs> next on Early Break on the Ticket. 
You're listening to Early Break with Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen, and Bill Bush on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Jake Sorensen here for The Body Shop. My wife is nearing her due date with our first child and has been in need of a good massage as her body continues to change and adapt. Dennis and the team at The Body Shop were incredible with the prenatal massage that she's still talking about today. I was also able to get a deep tissue massage, so it was a great bonding experience and a unique couple's massage in general. If you're in need of stress relief, book a massage today at thebodyshoplincoln.com, The Body Shop at 48th and A. Unearth the secret to long-lasting tires at Treads Central Tire Pros, a league apart in commitment, service, and expertise. This isn't just about rubber meeting the road, but trust, safety, and surety converging in perfect harmony. This is where expectations are exceeded every time. Make your appointment today at Tread Central Tire Pros just south of Cortland on Highway 77 or visit our website to explore our services. Remember, when it comes to tires, choose Tread Central Tire Pros because we tread differently. Your sprinklers are watering the street or flooding your backyard. If you're on a list that doesn't exist, it's time for Judson Irrigation. At Judson Irrigation, Lee or Lacey or Judson will make an appointment. You pick the time and they'll be there to fix your sprinkler system. Now that's service, a dying art these days. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or (gasps) judsonirrigation.com. The Mill Coffee and Tea, formerly with only four Lincoln locations. Guess what? What? There's five Lincoln locations now. Oh my gosh. That's 25% more Lincoln locations than there used to be. Can you even imagine a world where there's only four Lincoln Mill locations? Feels like ages ago. We were all so young then. (sighs) The Mill on 11th, located right alongside 93.7 The Ticket Studios, 1040 O Street. Plains Cover Crop is your one-stop seed shop. Call us now for spring and summer forages, CRP mixes, and fall cover crop blends. We do farm-specific consulting for practical and efficient seed blends to fit your geography and goals. With a very diverse inventory, we will tailor a blend just for you. We're also looking for contract growers, and we buy and sell rye. Find us online at plainscovercrop.com. Timeless agronomy practices paired with modern technology. East Highway 20 and Orchard in across Nebraska. 93.7 93.7 The Ticket, Fox, KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your length of forecast for today, we'll see lots of sunshine and light winds. Should be a beautiful day with a high around 70. Tonight, clear skies and light breeze with a low around 47. And tomorrow, we'll see increasing clouds. We'll get breezy but warm and a high around 84. I'm meteorologist Kyle Tucker for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. Bauer! Usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red! Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fuhrer's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter, or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fuhrer's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. Banking should feel personal, not intimidating. At Western National Bank, we're about real connections. Founded by two ordinary guys with an extraordinary vision to know each and every customer personally. Fees, they suck. Avoid all fees with Western National Bank's Compass Checking Account. No monthly fees, no minimum balances, and get this, 5.12 APY on the first $1,000. Open your Compass Checking Account online in five minutes or less at mywmb.com. Experience the difference with Western National Bank. Visit mywmb.com. Member FDIC. If you're a homeowner or a business owner, you have a lot of projects, and no one has an unlimited budget or time. Sunbelt Rentals makes all jobs less stressful with no need to purchase large equipment or hire a crew. You can do it yourself with rentals and everything from aerators and power rakes for spring yard work to stump grinders, concrete mixers, tile saws, and more. 
Check out their inventory in Lincoln, north of Cornhusker Highway on 56th Street, or online at sunbeltrentals.com. Hey guys, Jake Sorensen here from Early Break. The garage door at our house has been needing replacement for a couple years, and a few months ago, we finally did something about it. Steve's Garage Doors and Services was great through the whole process in providing options and also going to the next level to get a door that was approved by our HOA. And best of all, the removal of the old door and installation of the new door was done smoothly with no issues. Call Steve's Garage Doors and Services today at 402-480-2840. This. Anybody who knows me knows I was cocky out of the womb. <laughs> it's early break with Sip and Jay. Brought to you by Gaina Trucking. Weekday mornings from 6 to 8 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We'll get you a quick master's update in a second. Before that, though, our second segment, always sponsored by our friends at Bex Hybrids, the largest independent family-owned seed company in the USA. Founded in 1937, Bex Hybrids provides unrivaled customer service and product diversity for both corn and soybeans. Company founded on the three Fs, faith, family, and farming. Head over to Bex hybrids.com to find your nearest bex hybrids representative today and maybe you run into sunny beck possibly you never know 1937 yeah how about that yeah i mean it's almost 100 years yeah the bit <laughs> thank you for the update it's um this seven years yeah. how about that for quick math huh yeah, yeah businesses that last that long are amazing to me i salute them a lot in my head i like mcdonald's like mcdonald's yes i mean that that they just keep roaring i, I mean that's a kind of a somewhat poor example but no actually actually it's a really good example what's wrong with that just businesses that last that endure are amazing and bex is one of those they are awesome and sunny i hope to meet sunny pretty soon i think in august we'll meet sunny back another one is denny's oh denny's has endured why is denny's not here anymore it was over here you said back by where the general store was at right yeah, and there used to be one out by the airport. That saddens me. There was a time when there were two Denny's here and maybe three. Um, but there were definitely two. Yeah, there was one there was one in the shadow of Memorial Stadium. You know, is is to the west and south of Memorial Stadium. And then there Imagine was that one today be packed still. How how could that close down possibly? Denny's. It had to be packed all the time. Uh, yeah. And Sam, our friend, Sam managed it. I'd like to know what went wrong with Denny. Shout out to Sam. I haven't heard from Sam lately. Um, Sam, who, who works at high V, your yes, friend, I know Sam, our friend, he, he, ma- he managed that Denny's. What happened? What went wrong? Well, I mean, the land changed. You know, I ate Denny's. You're going to laugh at this. One summer I was doing a, a job in Vermont. In Vermont. I, I selling books. You can like I ate Denny's every day for three and a half straight months <laughs> for breakfast. Dead serious. Every single day for three and a half months, I had Denny's breakfast at about 6.30 in the morning. Did you really? Every day. Did you? Every seven days a week. Did you sit at the for bar? For three and a half. No, we sat at a table. It was a we. It yeah, wasn't it was just you. me and two other guys. You guys went in there every day. Every day. That's, not, that's, a, that's fine. Every single, with, without fail, without Every day. That's 100% fine. I supported Denny's very, you know, a lot financially that summer. Good for you. So what, what year would that have been? That was in 2011. Oh, not that long ago, really. Yep. Denny's was my go-to at the Grand Slam. The Denny's near the stadium must have closed in the area of 1990, I would say. 92, 93 Sad. in that Bring area. Bring it back. Bring back Denny's to Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, we, get it, we need it back. All right. Are you ready? Right, yeah, play Get it. your hushed tones. Yeah, it is time it. to... Uh, Get in the mood here. Okay. Hello, friends. Day two of the Masters begins uh, momentarily. Actually, day one continues because there was a rain delay that caused uh, the play to be halted. Didn't start for about two and a half hours. A lot of guys did finish, including Bryson DeChambeau, top of the board at seven under par. His he best did ever. His best ever round at Augusta National, <laughs> seven under par. DeChambeau. Hit 10 fairways. Hit 10 fairways, 15 greens. He got off to a dream start. Just like this song is a hey, dream. Hey, hey, dream start? 
three straight birdies out of the gate. I saw it. It was impressive. Three. Speaking of dream start, the man who was the favorite for a reason going in, Scotty Scheffler. Mm-hmm. No bogeys, six birdies, made it look so easy. They're six all- under par, 66 hits, one stroke back of Bryson DeChambeau after day one. There aren't enough words to describe Scheffler. Scott. Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Scott Scotty Scheffler. Right. Uh, his swing is unique. It doesn't look like it should be belong to a, the top player in the world, but you know what? Swing your swing, Scotty. Swing your swing. Six under par. For those curious, Tiger Woods did not finish the first round. He uh, is one of those will be on the course here in four minutes. Four minutes from now, action begins. You can watch an ESPN this morning. We'll have it on the TV outside here. But Tiger Woods, through 13 holes, sits at one under par. Five holes to go before he gets a, to round two. The problem with Tiger Woods, of course, uh, Sip, is that but he cannot really afford to be playing more than 18 holes on a day. The way his body is at this point, it's broken down. It's, it's broken down. It's broken down. Dan, Danny Willett, another former Masters winner. 2016, when Jordan Spieth choked that one away, Danny Willett won that one. Minus four. He is. And he was not going to play as of Sunday. Decided, yeah, I played pretty well. I'm going to play. Max Homa actually is also at minus four. He has five holes to go still, I believe. He's, oh, that's true. I don't think he's done quite yet, Max Homa. But he's still playing good golf, Max Homa. So there's a quick update on the Masters. Again, action returns in three minutes, the end oh, of God. round one. There's, the, I think the most holes left for somebody is eight. Eight holes. They're all in the back. Nine. Will you have Masters playing on the monitors? I probably shouldn't have it in here because I'll get distracted for the second hour of the show. However, that TV out there, yes, we'll have it on. I think that's okay. otherwise our show will be on all the different TVs except for this one TV. We'll have the Masters on the show. The excuse me, the screen right outside the door is not in your view, so I think you'll be okay. From the text line, <laughs> Giltner <laughs> says he has chills with the background music right now and the hushed tones of the voices. We are being quiet. This is like we're back in the hotel room in Memphis, Tennessee, ahead of Nebraska's <laughs> loss to Texas A&M in the tournament. I wish you wouldn't bring that up. I did. It's too late. <laughs> From the text line, let's go, Tiger. Let's go, Tiger. It's called the second nine. Just scrub back nine, second nine. They, they both work. <laughs> I will not yell when I'm listening in when talking to hushed tones with the master's music. You were called the scrub. The back, the back nine is is a second is a proper term for the second nine in golf. You were called a scrub. I, don't, I will not yell scrub. with this delightful music playing in the background. It will not happen. <laughs> Scotty Scheffler likely to pull away, my opinion. What? That's your opinion. He it is my opinion. He is the best golfer in the world, and he has shown no signs of slowing down at all. Bryson DeChambeau has struggled on this course. He will, and he will fall apart. <laughs> that's your opinion. That's my opinion. DeChambeau averages a, a 75 Usually on these on the the last six rounds of golf here. Bryson DeChambeau, Augusta has, National. Yes, Bryson DeChambeau has been critical of it, Augusta National in the past. He, he says for him it's a par sixty seven, which is hilarious because he shoots seventy five, so he's shooting eight over versus three <laughs> over. Apparently, I think he's mature. When you are cocky like that, you deserve to have the ramifications of the azaleas of Augusta National and Ray's Creek, which is. Found many of his golf balls over the last couple of years. I, I would like to think Bryson DeChambeau has matured and can handle this. You are predicting Scheffler yes. to pull away. And if Tiger Woods were to make the cut, he would continue his streak of never missing the cut at the Masters, ever. I Last year withdrew because of injury and bad weather in round two, or round three, excuse me, but uh, yeah. How's Tiger's gait? It, it's it uh, music needs to come back. The ga- the gate is better. Gate? The gate's better. It still looks a little stiff. He looks looks stiff to me. Walking mm-hmm. up to the first tee just didn't look proper. Mm-hmm. But, but he's he's getting older. And he's had a lot of surgeries, a lot of issues. But mm-hmm. he's still there. So again, Bryson DeChambeau leads the way at seven under par. He is done. He will play round two when that action gets going. But their round one is getting restarted right now. We're continuing round one. We are. And Tiger Woods has five holes. He will begin today on hole 14. Is weather a factor today? I believe weather is good the rest of the time. So I think we will have a a normal Sunday finish at Augusta National. There is your update. Thank you. Uh, We will give you 
we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we give you updates throughout the day on the shows, but uh, there's your update as of right now throughout round one. When we come back, <laughs> we'll have Song of the Day. Thank you. And Aging Gracefully. Yes. Next on Early Break in the Ticket. to Early Break with Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen, and Bill Bush on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Go hog wild barbecue. If the week's been too hectic to even think about dinner or your family can't handle one more night of leftovers, then it's time to let Hog Wild do the cooking. Hog Wild's family packs are one heck of a good deal for a complete barbecue meal loaded with all the smoked meats, tasty sides, buns, and sauces you need to feed your family. Order online at GoHogWild.com. Hog Wild Pit Barbecue, 3210 Cornhusker Highway in Lincoln. But don't be late, we close at 8. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and digital insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainaTrucking.com. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. Wall-to-wall wine and spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top-shelf liquor to crowd-favorite beer, Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Banking should feel personal, not intimidating. At Western National Bank, we're about real connections. Founded by two ordinary guys with an extraordinary vision to know each and every customer personally. Fees, they suck. Avoid all fees with Western National Bank's Compass Checking Account. No monthly fees, no minimum balances, and get this, 5.12 APY on the first $1,000. Open your Compass Checking Account online in five minutes or less at mywmb.com. Experience the difference with Western National Bank. Visit mywmb.com. Member FDIC. Spring often marks the beginning of severe weather, which can lead to power outages. LES wants you to be prepared before the storm. Restock your emergency kit. Update your info with LES. And if you encounter an outage, report it at les.com slash report. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402-590-5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, garage doors and more. Hi, Sean Callahan here for Cobble Chevrolet GMC and our annual spring sales event is now underway. We have absolutely huge savings right now at Cobble. New Sierras and new Silverados have a double whammy. Choose from APR starting at 1.9% or discounts over 9,000. Yes, that's right. 1.9% APR or discounts of over 9,000. So please take that short money saving drive down 144th Street just south of the interstate or check us out online at CobbleCars.com. You'll be glad you did. All 
deals with approved credit. You love to bash his sports takes. Now, will you feel like a, an idiot if you're no, a big tough like If idiot. you're a big tough guy this morning, but you really love to voice your displeasure for his music choices. He stumbled on an issue that I did not think would generate this much passion and discussion. It's time for Jake's questionable song of the day on early break on 937 the ticket and the ticket fm.com. Once again, your song of the day, 1973 Radar Love by Golden Earring. 464 56851 is bad. 10 is good. Texture rating on the Sauter Heyman Jewelers song of the day. Well, we have a theme. We have a theme. We've stumbled into a theme. What's the theme? Corny songs. That. <laughs> corny songs that you like <laughs> you identified a song by Bachman Turner Overdrive taking care of business correct that you believe to be corny okay hokey that, that song's not corny right there wait a second we're not done all right then the other day you played Fogarty put me in coach center field center field whatever it's that's the corny song corny that's corny and you're, are you insisting that taking care of business is corny? Yes. I'm insisting that Radar Love it's is not, corny. It's not corny. That's not a corny song. No. Disagree. Corny. No, Fogarty's song is corny. Center field is corny for sure. This one's not. Josh likes this. Josh has the to the text line. Because and and the guitars were... I'm going to get hammered on this. You are. If you give it a bad score, you will get hammered for this. It's corny. I bet if Bill Gate was here, he'd give it a high score. It's corn. Just saying. <clears throat> I have to be me. I've got to be me. That's corny. I've always thought it was. I thought I, I've always thought it was overdone. Radar love. Off. Off the radio. <laughs> just that's just a bad take. Just, it's just a bad, <laughs> I, am I gonna get hammered yeah, for it? Am I getting hammered are amazing right now? Right now. So what, what's they, your score? Okay. I'm gonna go off the radio. Yeah, I'm gonna go um Three point, I can get it to three. I can get it to three point seven seven nine seven four. That's just embarrassing. You should be embarrassed to see if did Bill text it at all. No, no, Bill. Uh, okay, Josh is going to be high because it's got a great like baseline. I can, that way. Yeah, does it have a great yeah, baseline? It does. Yes. You don't know a great baseline. Got a great guitar. <laughs> what are you talking about? Great baseline. Eight point six from Josh. Okay, I'll go. I think by his reaction, I think it might even be higher. I'll go eight eight. Nine two. Nine point two outstanding drumming. Outstanding drumming. You see my drumming? I did the I did that. Did you? Yeah, I did it. Am I gonna get hammered? Let's get let's see what you got for scores here before we get to Aging Gracefully. A Giltner, nine point one. Rick from Wahoo, nine. Notorious B I B seven one five. Ron, eight point two five. Noticing a trend here? Pretty high. Yes, I do. Mike and Dalton, nine point two. Dino, seven point two. John in Des Moines says. Uh, cool tune. Josh has to like that great bass line. Eight. <laughs> Burn! 
in Columbus. Five. Oh, Bird just gave it a five. Yeah, it's pretty high for Bird. He gives it a lot of threes. <laughs> Wink in Kansas City says 8.7. Wink Martindale. Thank you, Wink Martindale. 9.7. Uh, Harper, eight. No low scores yet, my friend. None. Ryan in California, eight, nine. Husker Mike in Waterloo, six. Ellis in Illinois, 7.7. Sean in Omaha, 6.3. The worst score has been a five so far. Jesse and Milford, 8.7. My kids and I were jamming in the car to that one. I'm just going to say this. You keep going, but I have a supporter on the te- on my Bennett, text line. 7.8. Yeah. Zonk, 5.5-ish. Bolivar, 10. 12 for the drum solo, somebody says. Isaac says, not corny. Solid, 8.25. Someone says, sip is corny. <laughs> Bad take, sip, not corny from Joe and Boulder. Our friend Joe and Boulder. Cornball. Uh, Cornball. Ooh. Retro in South Lake Texas is I am with Sip on this one. Distinctly average song, 3.67. Thank you. Who was that? That was Retro in South Lake Texas. I salute you, Retro. And South Lake, I think that's near Austin. God bless you. Uh, th- someone says three times Sip scores. That's about a 10 at that point oh. from somebody. BTO uh, blows this bleep out of the water from Bob in Minnesota. That would help you out. Thank you, Bob. Bob's a cool dude. Someone else says, Sip, how can you love every other 70s song and not like this one? Just don't. That's a 70s? It's 1973. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That was a rare miss in the 70s. That's a cornball what, song. What did Jake? you get for a score from your personal text line? Here's what I saw. Or, excuse me. Here's what I got from Rick Heyman. This is Rick Heyman of the jewelry Who store. likes the 70s? Golden Ear. This is Rick Heyman. Golden Earring was a cheesy Euro pop crap band. 1.0. Golden Ear- Earring was a cheesy Euro pop crap band. 1.0. He also says that nobody ever talked about Golden Earring ever. They had one song. No, just... they had two songs. What was the other one? Twilight Zone. Yeah, another cornball song. Those are cornball city songs. Made it pretty well. They, they did pretty well. Well, yeah, there's a lot of cornball songs that did Including very well. Including your song, Taking Care of Business by BTO, an otherwise great band. Yeah, you're going to take shots? I'm taking shots too, my friend. It's right. so bad. Taking shots this morning. BTO's not cornball at all. Not cornball at all. It, well, they're not, but that's one song is. Like, Let It Ride's an amazing song. Yes, we it all, is. You yes, it all is. love that song because it's a great song. It's yes. not cheesy, though, but... Taking care of business is extremely cheesy. All right. And I can't believe you don't agree with that. I can't. Uh, before we get to Agent Gracefully, quick legal ID. I can't. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM for 93.7 The Ticket. And we want to bring in Josh for this because it's time for Agent Gracefully. And there's a reason why Josh is here. But before that, Agent Gracefully is sponsored by our friends at Treads Central Tire Pros. Uh, just south of Cortland on Highway 77 uh just south of yeah, so just just north of Piatra, south of Cortland. Go see the paradise. It's it's a palace of tires. Go see Ron and the guys at Treads Central Tire Pros. All types of tires there. What's that? Get that get that peace of mind. You need peace of mind. Get that peace of mind. You, if you're rolling on bad tires, that's not peace of mind. No, get that not. peace of mind. It's not. All right, so why why is Josh in here? We're today? gonna get to Josh in a second. So, okay, be ready, Josh. There's a couple things I want to address. I saw this on TikTok. This is aging gracefully. Yes, these are maybe things you want to avoid, but these are th- this was identified as things you say after fifty. Just stumbled this on TikTok. Stumbled upon this on TikTok yesterday. Things you say after fifty. I wish Bill were here. <laughs> Number one, there's 12. Where the hell is my phone? Now, I think there's a lot of age groups. I've heard Bill say that before. Yeah. We do say that a lot. Another one is, I don't know. I have not experienced this one, but I know people who have. How did I get this bruise? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I've heard that one before. (laughs) I haven't experienced it. Oh, this, this one. This one is a. This one gets me almost daily. That isn't my password either. What the hell? God dang, the password thing is freaky to me. How many how many passwords you need? And I hope that I hope that I always envision like people who are together have a list of their passwords that they're ready. And I don't. 
I don't have. I, I, I. Why do you keep changing up your passwords? You should have like one or two consistent ones that you can go to. Okay, that's the key. That's my. That's the key. Advice for you, aging gracefully. Keep Where going? Did, where did I put my glasses? Oh my God! There's been times they're on your head, and you don't yeah. know where they're at. <laughs> oh, I will put two here. on. I will put two on sometimes. I've seen you have them like literally up, up here, saying, "Where's my glasses?" Right. Like uh, right in your head, up above you, man. They're on your head. Here's one. I here's one. I think you guys would 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 agree that I do this. I adhere to this. I don't care. Wait a second. I don't care what it looks like. It's comfortable. I dress poorly. Yeah, like sweatpants. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, yeah. lot of people yeah. tell me I dress poorly. Well, I told you that I like some of the stuff you wear. The Yingling shirt, you should wear that again to practice because people gave you crap for it. It's a great shirt. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. This is this is big time when you get older. Who the heck is calling me after 9.30 p.m.? <laughs> Here's the problem. I've had. I've said that same thing myself. No, I know. <laughs> I'm 32, 33. <laughs> you're, you're in getting, a few weeks. You're you're going to be someone who needs to think about aging great. I have, I've, I've said that in my house. Who is calling me after 9:30? Oh no, things you bad. Say, things you say after 50. Jeez, does anyone say please and thank you anymore? Okay. Um, oh, I'm just going to do one last one before we get to Josh. Okay. This one I do all the time, all the time, daily. Why did I come in this room? <laughs> that happens to me a lot. Does it? Room. Yeah. Does it? Even yeah, there's not necessarily all aging things. Now, here's some more aging gracefully that I just thought about last night. Josh has helped me with something. What's that? I think you call it dabbing. Uh, dapping. Dap. Dapping. It's a D-A-P, yeah. It's not dabbing. It's dapping. Dapping. Josh, I think, identified a problem I have when I greet people. And then he helped me with it. And I've, I, would you say I've come a long way? I'll, I'll, I'll leave. I'll, I'll, the floor is yours, Josh. Well, you're doing great. You're an A-plus student in this category Thank now. You. All right. <laughs> well, I, I first noticed something was up after the story with Elizabeth. Yeah, when and the, did the bro hug. The bro hug. Yeah, half was very odd. Shake. Yeah. I <laughs> thought Elizabeth. Still is, still is strange to this day, but we've tried to move on from that encounter. <laughs> And at that moment, I realized, okay, you know, let, let's see how this goes in person. So I go to dap up Steve, and I couldn't tell if he was trying to, like, tackle me or throw some elbows. <laughs> so it, should, we, should we demonstrate? Yeah, or, let's, let's yeah. see it. So yeah. this is how camera. You're good. The bad one? You're this on this is camera. the bad one. Right. Look right there. Yeah. That's bad. That's bad. That was pretty yes, bad. Yes, the headphones yeah. almost went. I got, fly, I got uncomfortable tell. there. That was strange. Oh, I hit him. It I is, thought you'd go into his a chest. Aggressive too. I thought you'd go into the chest. A little aggressive. The, okay. the positive I have out of that is Steve really wants to be personable yeah. with his handshaking, but at the same time, you know, we have to tone it down a couple yes. notches. Yeah. Right? Okay, so that was the first encounter that that was the first. Yes. So we've we've gotten better since here. Yes. Yes. So what is what is this uh, now grown to? Okay. What is this changed to? Yes. Let's see. This All right, here we go. We're on. Okay, that's the okay, kid that's Okay, oh, we got some snaps. Oh, we got the now. snap. I taught Steve how to be. What a did little, you teach? I taught him to be more gentle. Mm-hmm. We don't good. need to be throwing elbows. <laughs> and I, I told him, I said, just go in with one arm. Yep. Lock the knuckle in it. If you're feeling snazzy, just add the snap. And he's tested it with all the guys from the drive. Mm-hmm. It works here, and I, you've made a lot of progress. Thank how, you. How long has this been going on for? I dapped. I dapped DP yesterday. You did. How'd that go? It went well. You saw did, did he it, right? comment yeah, it was on good. It? Did he comment no, on it? No, no. DP didn't know I had a problem. Um, I just, I did, it, it went well. Jay Foreman one time commented that he said it was a little aggressive. <laughs> 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 Jay, well, I got into Foreman one time. Yeah. Um, he got into he's like, oh, sip, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but now that I feel like I've taught you, yeah, no, no. You're, you're ready to go out into the world and, and dap a lot of people up. You've taught me well. You did. This he made is, it a point of doing this. This is still not a way you want to greet probably a significant other. <laughs> no. That that's, if, that's unless it comes too. around again. Maybe you just do the side hug next time. Side hug. The, the yeah. non awkward. There's no, no yeah. dapping. The side hug is important don't in this dap. world. W- yeah, we'll go through lesson two yeah, okay. in about Josh, a week. Help him out with the side hug. Okay? Yeah, not, I, not I'm right now. That. No, I'm pretty good about that. Pretty good. Not in February. You weren't. It was, it was concerning. Still a conversation in the household to this day. <laughs> poor, poor Elizabeth. Yeah, I felt so bad for. Her. 
I was oh, you did. I felt horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been awkward for you, Jake. No, uh, so weird. <laughs> no, but I will tell you this, Josh. Jake handled it really well. It's good. We just kept talking. You didn't. You didn't really. I kind of paused for a second. Say like, what? <laughs> but I didn't notice your hesitation. It was there was hesitation. And people saw this was the problem. You know, Robin saw this. Everybody saw this. Robin, <laughs> Robin knows very well how awkward I can be. That, that was it. Yeah. You, you got that one nailed down there. So, well, thank you, Josh. Josh, for, good, hey, Josh. Of course. Thank, thank you for helping you sip out with the dapping. This is Josh amazing. Life. He used to be pretty good. I like getting Josh on camera sometimes so people see him. Well, he's done a great job for yes, us. Yes, he has. Appreciate so, you guys. Thank, thank you, Josh. That is Aging Gracefully, sponsored by our friends at Treads Central Tire Pro, just south the. Uh, Cortland on Highway 77, yournexttire.com. Top of the hour is next. Back to some audio from post-practice Don Rayola. Offensive line discussion next on Early Break of the Ticket. You're listening to Early Break with Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen, and Bill Bush on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hi, this is State Senator Carolyn Bozin. As a state senator, wife, and mom, I believe Lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family. My husband Reggie and I are local family business owners and actively involved in our community. Last year, I voted for the largest property tax relief package in Nebraska history. Property tax relief is important to every family, and I will continue to deliver more property tax relief to working families. This is Carolyn Bozin, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Bosin for Legislature. This is Coach Bill Bush. You all know my passion for Nebraska. Having coached all over the country, I can honestly say there is no place like Nebraska. You know what there's also no place like? Midwest Bank. Midwest Bank has proudly served Nebraska for over 70 years, and they're located in nine different communities. Midwest Bank is ready, willing, and able to meet all your personal, business, and agriculture needs. Your community, your bank, and mine, Midwest Bank. Find out more at Midwest Bank. Member FDIC. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Ballard. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why, as your senator, I helped pass the largest task and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. The Lincoln Marathon hits the streets Sunday, May 5th. Will you be part of the pack? Registration is now open for the full and half marathon at the LincolnMarathon.org. This event offers something for runners of all ages and abilities, from elite athletes to those looking to accomplish a fitness goal or check off a bucket list item. Sign up now to run the marathon on Sunday, May 5th. If running isn't in the cards, consider volunteering on race day. Complete event details can be found at LincolnMarathon.org. Perch Merch is your one-stop shop for all your printing and promotional needs in Lincoln, Nebraska. They specialize in screen printing, embroidery, vehicle wraps, window wraps, print collateral, promotional products, and signage. At Perch Merch, they are committed to delivering high-quality products and exceptional customer service. Their experienced team of designers and printing professionals will work with you every step of the way to ensure that your vision is realized. Call for a quote today at 402-217-5212 or go to perch-merch.com. Several irrigation contractors in Lincoln go out of business every year, leaving sprinkler system orphans begging for service. The folks at Judson Irrigation shed a tear for these little fellas. They've been coddling these orphans for more than 40 years. From redesign, repairing, replacing, and restoring, remember the Judson Irrigation Orphanage. Call the Judson Irrigation Orphanage, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. 
At Fairway Meat Market, your family, and as part of the family, they want to save you money on your meat and groceries. Now through April 14th, enjoy USDA Choice 8-ounce bacon wrap sirloins for $3.99 each. USDA Choice Tri-Tip for $9.99 per pound. One dozen large eggs for $1.98 when you purchase two. And 24 packs of Miller Lite or Coors Light for $15.99 with the purchase of two. That's all at Fairway Meat Market in the Rockledge Square Shopping Center, just south of 84th and Van Dorn. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, garage doors, and more. Spring often marks the beginning of severe weather, which can lead to power outages. LES wants you to be prepared before the storm. Restock your emergency kit, update your info with LES, and if you encounter an outage, report it at les.com slash report. <laughs> Wake up, Lincoln. I overslept. Damn rooster didn't crow. It's time for Early Break. Sponsored by Midwest Bank. Live from Lincoln, America. Here's 93.7 The Ticket's Jake Sorensen. I'm wrong, but I'm not. Husker Online, Steve Sipple. If I were a feral cat. And longtime college football assistant coach. Bill Bush. You get one team. Mine's the Houston Oilers. I'm, so, not, I'm not the Texans, and I'm not the Titans, so, so I'm out. out. This is Early Break. Welcome back to Hour 2 on a Friday. Steve Sipple, Jake Sorensen, early break. Bill Bush out today, back again on Monday. Hour 2 sponsored by our friends at Midwest Bank. Member FDIC location in South Lincoln at 27th and Jamie Lane also now at 70th and Pioneers in the beautiful stone building. <laughs> you and your stone building. Yeah, okay. I saw the stone. It's possible that Bill and Shindy are together. Oh, and- maybe, maybe in Augusta, Georgia. Oh, for God's sake! They could We'd be know watching that. the Masters. We'd know that they could be watching the Masters at on their TVs, which you were just doing. Tiger as, just as, off. As were you, you. You were also watching the Masters. You sat down on the couch and you watched golf. Tiger teed off just a little bit ago and hit one right down the middle. Yeah, drove somebody too. Yeah, not the short guy in the fairway. Yeah. So, good job by Tiger. And again, DeChambeau, top of the board, seven under par. Scheffler, six under par. Guys are finishing up their. First rounds right now. Mm-hmm. And we should have second round action probably around 10 a.m. Central Time. As for the weather, it looks perfect. It did look amazing. Yeah. That Yeah. looked not windy. and looked like it was very calm, sunny. Who was wearing the hoodie? That was K- Kurt Kitayama. So, we, yeah. So, we, we showed a, they showed a birdie putt on hole 16 for Kurt Kitayama. He's now two under par. <clears throat> and this is a place, Augusta National, which is, again, the, the nicest course in the world probably. The just pristine. Everything is clipped perfectly on the grass, the rough. It's perfect, right? Yeah, it's a it's a it's an exclusive club. But he had a, a hoodie on, N- not a good this, look. This is beca- so like the jogger pants and the hoodie look have become popular on the PGA Tour and live golf. That's unfortunate. Which on the normal tour events, okay, I get that. This is the Masters. Right. I'm, I'm stunned they allowed that on the golf course. Yeah, a hoodie. I mean, it just looks like. Big swim out there. It, it did appear to be big swim out there. I, I am serious about this. I'm a little surprised Augusta National allows a hoodie. And it wasn't like a, a, you know, it wasn't a streamlined, nice hoodie. It was just a hoodie. Yeah, it, didn't, it, it just it had, it had a logo on it. Yeah. But it wasn't nice. By the way, Tiger Woods did bogey his first hole. So he's even, he's one over, on, you know, today, even par for the even. tournament. Yeah, he's even. Through 14 holes. Through 14. Okay. So, in the cut line, again, well, he has one more round to play, but should the cut line is still plus one. No, no, we, hush tone. We okay. Hush tone. Yeah, okay. we're okay in that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so actually, actually, second round will begin shortly because they can play the front nine. They're, everyone's on the back nine right now. They want to adjust the back nine tees, uh, t- uh, tee boxes and greens soon. You know what the breakers want? What? Football talk. They do. And, by the way, thanks again to Midwest Bank for, for always sponsoring our two 
of our show. 464-5685, call or text as always. Back to post-practice from yesterday. We have a, a, a question that we will address. We will we'll put okay. Matt Rule audio, but okay. it's a pretty simple question. I think. Okay, do it. Simply this. Can Nebraska have a true running back-led run game, not quarterback run game first, running back second? Can right. a running back truly lead the way this year for Nebraska football? Mike Schaefer, our friend, who was joined us yesterday from 24-7 <laughs> Sports, said it's been like 10 years since Nebraska had a running back that can lead the way. Well, we're talking about Amir Abdullah. That's right. And, and now we had 14. Yeah, we had a kind of a, you know, we had an uprising of Divino Zigbo when he he ran for over a thousand and averaged seven yards a carry in 2017 or probably. 18. Yeah. Um, in that range, it would have been Frost first year, 2018. Yeah. So, no. So now some people are going to say, wait a second, numbskulls. Nebraska was a strong rushing team last year. They were second in the Big Ten in rushing last year, behind only Penn State. Nebraska averaged, I'm going to say, 177 point something yards. But you'd point out that a lot of that was with the quarterback. So Heinrich Harburg led the team in rushing. The quarterback, the quarterback led the team in rushing. And quarterbacks had problems holding on to the football, both fumbling and interception. True. And we've seen we've also seen Nebraska at times they have run the ball well. Even in the frost era, they ran it well, but it was often the quarterback. If you take the quarterback out of the equation, they really didn't run the ball that well, right? No. Not I'm talking consistently at least. I'm talking about now. Why are we talking about? Because you're not going to have the quarterback run game this year. If if it's not Heinrich, and even if it is Heinrich Harburg, they won't run him as much. They if if Heinrich would happen to win the job, you won't see the same. He won't run the ball as much. They'll pick his spots more. Is my guess. That's my guess. Based is a guess. Educated guess is based on comments that Heinrich made the other day. I think he'd have to pick his spots more. He, I mean, a lot of people predicted last year. A lot of former coaches that would text me during games saying, this isn't going to last. You know that, right? He can't keep running like that. And then what happened to him? He got banged up. He couldn't run like that as the year went on. He broke free against Michigan State um, for a long run late in that game. Sort of an aberration, though. It wasn't yeah. happening. So if you if you start Dylan Rayola, as I expect will be the case, Dylan's not going to run. He can now, now, he can get up field if he has to. You know, he can. I saw it in Hawaii, Polynesian Bowl practices. He looks pretty good running it, but he's not, that's not his deal. It's not his, he didn't want to do it, I don't think, a lot. Um, his brother, Dayton, Ryola, more of a runner. Okay. Uh, Dylan doesn't want to do it as much. It's not his style. And Danny Kalen, he's not a runner. So, Jake, it's, it's necessary now. You got to get the running back running game going. Well, let's see what Matt Rule thinks about that running back room at this point. Yes. He spoke about it yesterday after practice. Here's Matt Rule on the running back room. Yeah, I think it's one of those deals where it's really going to be about the fall. Um, you know, I, I mean, I've seen what Ramirez can do. And what I have to make the staff do is go back and watch the 21 Michigan game sometimes to see him when he was like the feature back. I don't know why he wasn't the feature back in 22, but he wasn't. So it was hard to see. Sometimes you can look at a guy like that, like, ah, oh, we should play him here. And you give him this limited role. Like Ramirez was, t you know, lining up and taking outside zones against Michigan and, and, and slicing and Dyson. I've seen Gabe at his best. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think, you know, we saw Emmett evolving into a guy that could take games over. You know, when you look at the run he had at Purdue, you look at the run he had at the end of the game to set us up. I, I can't remember Maryland, Wisconsin. He, they get to run in both games to set us up on the last drive. He's, get kind of ready, get ready to bust out. I'm a big fan of Ives. Since if you guys go look at it, every time I've talked about Quentin Ives, I believe he can be this, right? I believe he can be this. He, um, so this is a big camp for him. You know, whereas Emmett's trying to take the step into dominant player, Quentin's trying to take the step into, hey, I'm going to be here every day, know what to do, be healthy. And then uh, Dante's in the same boat, right? Dante's trying to take the step into every down back. But the, the things I see that are positive are really positive. Um, but I, I think a lot of that's going to come to fruition in the, in the fall. If you're a team to me that has just one back that you play and he has 25 plus carries, <coughs> Hey, you're not doing right by him. Cause he's going to be all beat up when it's his chance to go to the NFL. I mean, we've always wanted to have a 20 carry back and a 12 carry back. And then a third, you know, we want to play three guys and we certainly look like we have enough guys to do that. All right. There's Matt rule in the running back room. 
couple things out of that that are really interesting. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to have to write about this for Sunday. I think he says that Dante da- Dowdell is basically, he puts him in the Quentin Ives category in a sense, in, in that they're trying to learn how to be every down backs. Now we, we probably maybe talked about Dowdell differently than that. Right. We did. I did. Yeah. You did. I did. Collectively. We did collectively. So Dowdell, I don't think you'd say, look at Dowdell based on Matt rules, public comments and say he looks like they're number one. No, not right now he doesn't. Not right now. He also said, I think he, Matt Rule, I think I've seen Gabe Irvin at his best. I hope, I hope that Irvin has another best in him. He's good. He was good. I thought he got rolling against Colorado, and I thought when he got rolling against Colorado, I thought Nebraska was going to win the game. And then – and then it went south because of the turnovers and, yeah. and defense kind of imploded also. Right. When when he got kind of going, I thought, okay, this they're going to win this game. And then, it, yeah, then it imploded. Gabe Irvin in a green jersey this spring. Okay. Ramir Johnson in a green jersey this spring. So you're not going to know till the fall. Emmett Johnson. Emmett Johnson. 90 carries last year, 411 yards, 4.6 per carry, uh, long of 29. Rule obviously likes him. He's bigger. Man, I'll tell you one thing about Emmett Johnson. He put on some good size. You, you might not recognize him. In fact, when he came out for the dunk contest, the dunk contest against Minnesota, Minnesota during the, you know, at yeah, PBA. He was there and all those guys. When, when he came out, I thought it was Irvin. I said to Robin, man, Gabe Irvin. He goes, simple, that's not Gabe Irvin. That's Emmett Johnson. I, he was big. Emmett Johnson put on some good size. I think the running back room is in pretty good shape. Now, are they going to have a 1,000-yard rusher? It doesn't sound like it because they're going to spread the ball around, right? Well, yeah, that is what this sounds like. You still want a guy that can be your lead back, though. I know he does, that's not what he's saying there, but you want somebody you can count on. I'm with you. Right? On that. You you always you feel the same I'm way. With you you on want that. the big yeah. horse. You want somebody yeah. that you listen, I know he said you, you don't want twenty five carries a game because it gets them ah. for the next level of their, right. their life. It, it takes it's too many totes for them. But listen, Blake Corm got a lot of carries at Michigan, did he not? Blake yeah. Corm? Yeah, he did. He's gonna be a, a pretty highly drafted That's player not for the running best back. example because they didn't they didn't overload him, but he's it's not a I'm with you on this. I think if, if a guy gets 25, it means he got on a bit of a heater, right? That's he right. got in a rhythm. Get him in a rhythm. Yeah. I like – no, I'm with you on that. I I don't mind the thought of a guy that you can give it to 20, 25 times and get you 120, 130, 140 not, yards. Yeah, not to disrespect any of the backs. You don't have what Ohio State has of Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins. No, nobody has Two that. very highly drafted running backs likely. You Who has those, that? Those are two absolute studs that could both be all American running backs. But you when, don't have that here. But when you say nobody does, except for Ohio State, they have. That's it. They have Travion Henderson. And I'm very curious to see what that looks like in terms of how they utilize that backfield because they okay. both want the ball a lot. And they also have great receivers at Ohio State. You know what? You know who's the biggest fan of that scenario of having Quinshawn Jukins and Travion Henderson? You know who's the biggest fan? Who? Whoever plays quarterback for Ohio State. Will Howard, likely. He's a big fan of that. That takes a lot of pressure Security off. Security blanket. Yeah, it takes a lot of pressure off the quarterback. And Dylan Raiola has said the words, a running back, a running game, or a running back running game is a quarterback's best friend. Okay? So Wouldn't that be nice to have that here? Like you said, the, the stats were good running the football this year, but a lot of that was you know, Harburg led the way for Nebraska at quarterback, running the ball. Yeah, Anthony Grant led Nebraska last year. Out of the running backs, out of the running backs, 104 carries for 413 yards. 104 carries for 413 yards. He was he was okay, but Amir Abdullah ran for 1,500 yards in back to back seasons. Yep. Okay, that's and, what we're and talking about. The way he about. ran the ball was just is beautiful. Right, right. Now, do they have that? I doubt it. I don't think. I mean, Amir Abdullah's don't always come along, but man, it, you'd think at some point Nebraska could have another running back with the talent and ability of Amir Abdullah. They're out there. You can get them. I don't know that there's one in this room, but this is a pretty good room. It's a pretty good room because you'd say it's a pretty deep room. We didn't talk about Ives. Ives hurt his hamstring. Um, Quentin Ives. Yeah, Quentin Ives 
has has battled a hamstring in camp at a just horrible timing for him. With Irvin and Johnson out, a guy like Quentin Ives could make his mark and just hasn't been able to do it that I know of. I mean, his hamstring uh, was an issue this week. You'd think that this is this could be big for Dowdell. Dowdell, by the way, 17 carries for 90 yards and a touchdown at Oregon last year. Dowdell, I told you the other day, I I put eyes on him. He ran right by me. I mean, and I was, you know, I thought it big thought, horse did. Oh, yeah, he's a big horse. He's not a he's not as big a horse as I thought. He's pretty streamlined. It, it's a good looking back. It's a good looking back. But you don't look at him and go, oh man, Dan Alexander. No, it's not like that. Oh, Derrick Henry. <laughs> no, it's not like that. He's he's a good looking running back. Couple, runs- couple texts uh, regarding running back room from from Breakers four six four five six eight five. Someone says, don't forget about the spring portal opening soon. The running back room could. And probably will change a little bit. I don't know. Week. Now, now, hold on, hold on. I, I due respect to the breaker, I don't think they'll go go get a running back. Now, now, remember too, breaker. It will tell you something if they do, though. R- remember, breaker. I don't rule doesn't go into the portal much. I don't think they're. Go- You're not going to see much portal activity from the standpoint of Nebraska going in. He's not that guy. He doesn't do a lot of that. You notice that. Well, they got two receivers from the portal, Isaiah Nayor and I know, but, Jamal Bank. But the spring portal, I don't – last year they got one guy out of the spring portal. That was his first year back in the in football. Name him. In the spring. <laughs> they got one guy out of the portal last spring. Uh, one. Connect. You got it. Boom. God, good job. I'll give myself one of these, actually. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Tyler Connect. I don't know if they'll go get a running back. I don't think you need to, unless one just presents himself and says, I want to come there. I, don't, I, I wouldn't expect it. Well, this is why this person brings up Gator, a different texture. Gator says this. I go by the notion that if you have, if you have a lot of running backs, you don't have any, meaning if you had a guy, then you wouldn't be by committee. Well, he I tried mean, now rule. Try to explain why he views it as this, as a, a potential committee for Nebraska in that quote, but he didn't want somebody getting 25 carries a game in the big 10. It's hard. But and, and, and now I would ask you this: Who does in the Big Ten? You don't see it all that often. Illinois had that running back a few years ago. Got hurt in Lincoln, by the way. Who was that running back? If you get this one, you're amazing. I won't get it. They had a big time running Reg, back, Reggie Corbin. Uh, I don't think so. But Reggie it, Love? No, no, no. Good God, they had a guy that was that ran for well over a thousand. Oh yeah. Uh, God. But anyway, see how, see how quickly you forget. But you don't see a lot of that. You don't see a lot of it. You see, now think, think about it. Name. Don't worry about it. Think about it in the Big Ten. <clears throat> how, how often do you see these days a running back that gets loaded up? 25. The, the, the kid at Minnesota did. Ibrahim. Yeah, Ibrahim did. Where's Ibrahim now? He's not playing. I don't, I don't, yeah. He didn't make it in the He was the Lions practice squad. So now offensive line. Saquon Barkley did. That was eight years, seven years ago. Though. Did they load up Saquon? Oh, yeah. A lot of carries for Saquon. Okay. Now you have some sound. You have some sound from Donovan. Yeah, I don't got, know. We, we got about a minute or two here. What do you, what do you want? To well, get I mean, this is we don't have to get to Donovan if you don't want. It, but this is a this is also an offensive line discussion. You would think with Nebraska's offensive line that because of its because it's a veteran, because of its size, just its makeup, you would think this could be a good running team, right? Right? Should be. Donovan talked about the experience on the offensive line Do yesterday. It. Here's Donovan Rayola. Um, you know, first off, I'm just so grateful to be a part part of this uh, you know, unit uh with all the experience. Um, with all that experience, you know, I think they do a great job of helping the young guys understand the technique, understand the scheme, understand the standards that we expect. So um, you know, um it's just, you know, great to be a part of Donovan Rayola. Begins his third year at Nebraska. This should be a good year. This is where it all has settled in. There's no reason for it not to be a good year for Donovan. Because he has his guys. He's been teaching them. They know his expectations. They love him, by the way. Those players love him. They really do. I mean, he's he's a very... Well, they're sticking around. They're sticking right? around. Yeah. Sticking around. Oh, they love him. I mean, I had see a bunch of guys transferring out. No, no, they love him. I know they do. I sat with Ethan Piper and had coffee at the mill on Innovation Campus um, a few months ago, a couple months ago, and he pounded that into my head. Oh no, they that 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 line will do anything for Donovan. 
Now, I hope they open holes for the running backs. That's what you want to see. They do have veteran players. Ben Scott, Teddy Prohaska, Bryce Benhart, Latovsky's a veteran. Um, Turner Corcoran's in a green jersey right now, but he's a veteran. Justin Evans, I would call a, I would call a veteran. That, that should be able to, as hard as, it is in, as hard as it is in the Big Ten, it's hard to run the ball consistently in that league. It's a tough league, tough run-stopping league. But you, they should be able to do it. And you know what? They should come out against Texas El Paso and roll them. They should. They should. I have no doubt you're the, you're the better team. Go right. prove it. Yeah. Just go do it. Do it against Colorado, too. Hammer Colorado on the ground. Keep the ball out of Shadur Sanders' hands. Keep the ball out. That's what you do in that game, right? You have a big, experienced offensive line. Utilize that. Yeah, and you have you have a stable of running backs. Got options there. Yep. So there we go. More update from practice. And again, scrimmage tomorrow. We'll have some. We'll have updates from how it went. I guess when Matt Rule speaks next time uh, from Saturday. But uh, scrimmage is tomorrow at for the Huskers. The first of the spring. When we come back, it's time for Bill's thrills, sips, tips. We got a movie for you. A film recommendation Friday is next on Early Break on the Ticket. You're listening to Early Break with Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen, and Bill Bush on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hi, this is State Senator Carolyn Bozin. Education is a cornerstone to building a strong, vibrant community. I voted for the historic increase in funding for education in the legislature. As a state senator, wife, and mom, I believe Lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family. My husband Reggie and I are local business owners and understand the valuable role of education in our community. This is Carolyn Bozin, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th, paid for by Bozin for Legislature. Perch Merch is your one-stop shop for all your printing and promotional needs in Lincoln, Nebraska. They specialize in screen printing, embroidery, vehicle wraps, window wraps, print collateral, promotional products, and signage. At Perch Merch, they are committed to delivering high-quality products and exceptional customer service. Their experienced team of designers and printing professionals will work with you every step of the way to ensure that your vision is realized. Call for a quote today at 402-217-5212 or go to perch-merch.com. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Bally. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why as your senator, I helped pass the largest task and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. Bagels and Joe is the perfect place for breakfast or lunch in April. Try their brand new cake batter cream cheese on any breakfast sandwich. And try the caramel latte as 10% of proceeds from that drink will go to the Foundation for Lincoln Public Schools. Four locations in Lincoln and one in Seward, Bagels and Joe. At Fairway Meat Market, your family, and as part of the family, they want to save you money on your meat and groceries. Now, through April 14th, enjoy USDA Choice 8-ounce bacon-wrapped sirloins for $3.99 each, USDA Choice Tri-Tip for $9.99 per pound, one dozen large eggs for $1.98 when you purchase two, and 24 packs of Miller Lite or Coors Light for $15.99 with the purchase of two. That's all at Fairway Meat Market in the Rockledge Square Shopping Center, just south of 84th and Van Dorn. Hockey season is winding down for the Lincoln Stars. Our final home game is Friday, April 12th, as we take on the Sioux City Musketeers at 7.05 at the Icebox. It's fandomonium all night long as we salute our great fans with prizes throughout the game. Don't miss out on your last chance to catch the Stars take the ice this regular season. Purchase your tickets now at LincolnStars.com. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Hi everyone, Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. Spring is here, summer is fast approaching. 
with weddings, vacations, and weekend getaways on your mind, do not let car issues prevent you from getting where you need to be. Car problems shouldn't be something that you put up with. Let us get you back on the road in comfort and safety. We diagnose all makes and models from Porsches to Hondas, Toyotas, and Chevrolets. We fix a variety of issues with all of them with our talented techs and our experienced staff. A1 Automotive at 11th and L, downtown Lincoln. Always honest answers. Gainet Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gainet Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gainet Trucking offers health, vision, and digital insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gainet Trucking. Learn more and apply today at gainatrucking.com. Ever wish you had another light switch on the other side of the room on a dark night? How much better would you sleep at night if you had a ceiling fan in your room? The High Electric Service Department is here to make your electrical what-ifs a reality. Whether you're looking to replace some outdated light fixtures or brighten up your counters with under-cabinet lighting, High Electric can handle all types of residential electrical installations and services. Give Erica a call at 402-466-6606 or visit high-electric.com to get started. Iron High Construction is hiring. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Iron High Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and erector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Iron High Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com where they're committed to you every step of the way. We're on the air. Back. Well, party's starting early today, isn't it? To more of Early Break with Sip and Jay, brought to you by Gaina Trucking. <laughs> on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We will get to uh, Bill's Thrills in one second. Before that, Sip, is it second rate or is it third rate? What is it? It's first rate. It's first rate ag My in God, Holdridge. Dude. Full service ag retailer offering everything from crop protection to lawn fertilizer. They've been around for 25 years in business. That's pretty good. 25 yeah, years. These long time businesses, you know my feelings on those. That's right. Uh, reach out to firstrateag.com or 308. 308- Nine nine five eight three two seven. Ask for Parker or Chris, and please, please, mention the ticket. They'll help you out there. Yes. Get you a discount. Play the music. Which one? The Masters. Oh, okay. I didn't. There's several things we have for music here, so I didn't know which one you were talking about. The Masters. There. All right, let's get to it. Uh, Come on. Hang on. Here we go. There we go. Update from Augusta National. Yes. Tiger Woods told you. Uh, Started in hole 14, was one under par going into today, finishing his first round. Bogey, hole 14. Bogey. Parred the par 5, 15th hole. As of right now, he has a birdie putt from about 25 feet on 16, par 3 over the water. Par 3. The person right ahead of him, wearing the most ridiculous sweater I've ever seen in my life. I'll show you it when we get out there. Jason Day. I don't know who is dressing Jason Day, but he looks he looks terrible. Hmm. You saw the... The hoodie? Yes. The hoodie was way better than what Jason Day is wearing on that course. The hoodie worn by... Kurt Kitayama. Kurt Kitayama. Yeah. If anybody's watching, please, the Masters, please comment. You can text us at 402-464-5685. I don't know what Jason Day is wearing. It I'm concerns gonna to, me. I'm going to have to check this out. He had some very strange rain pants on yesterday that were very baggy. Reminded me like 2002 baggy style clothing anyways you would agree now I, I know i'm poking the bear a little bit here but tiger looks a little stiff to me i told you he looked stiff yesterday walking to the first tee yes. people thought he did and said you're lying to yourself he looks stiff yeah he looks stiff anyway tiger swing Wood, looks stiff tiger woods even through 15 holes birdie putt on 16 from 25 feet jason day I mentioned jason day he hit in the water right before tiger woods on 16 tiger woods is an iconic figure but he's taken a strange approach to training for golf he looks like an inside linebacker and he plays four times a year, maybe five, maybe six. I guarantee you he's lifting weights daily. Well, maybe he needs to do something to 
maybe cut down on the maybe weight. Maybe limber. Maybe yes. some limber, Tiger. Yes. So Master's yeah. action continues all day today. It does, and so do our soft tones, <laughs> except for after this music's done, then we're back to normal. Yes. But Just stop the music. as your update from Augusta National. All right. Let's get to Bill's Thrills. Yes. Sips tips on a Friday. Here we go. Some call him the most interesting man in the world. That is setting up the morel mushroom yes. bonanza. Oh, okay. yeah. Is going to be bonanza? Mushrooms grow better with thunder and lightning. Others call him coach. But to everyone else, he's Bill. I want to get one of those military ab stimulators for us to wear during the show. You see, I sent it to you today. It's time for Bill's Thrills on Early Break. Sponsored by Dirk, Scott, and Ty at Mid Plains Advisor. Yes, Bill's Thrills, Sips, Tips, Jake's Takes, all sponsored by Dirk, Scott, and Ty at Mid Plains Advisors, the ATMs, the Cash Cows, and Lincoln. Please call them at 402 730 730 7387. One more time 402 730 7387. They're just north of 27th and Old Cheney, and they're the Cash Cows and Lincoln. I am not telling anybody to watch a movie. I'm just not going to do that. Because when someone tells me to watch a movie, it decreases the chances of me watching the yeah, movie. It's called film recommendation yes. Friday, not film requests. Friday. Yeah. I'm, now, I will say this, though. And this is just this is just basically idle chit-chat. But, but you know that I've watched American Made – I don't know. I'm going to say 12 times. I think it's more like 65. Yeah. So American Made is the movie that I've I've always thought is the best I've seen. I'm most captivated by. But there's a there's I it dawned on me yesterday as I was watching this. It was on one of the the just I think TNT type channels. And I've seen this movie, this other movie not as many times as American Made, but I'm it's starting to get to that number. And it's a movie that I almost regard as highly as American made. And that's Casino. It's Casino because it's De Niro. And I believe De Niro was maybe at his finest in Raging Bull. But he's it's close in Casino. He's really good in Casino. Like, he's a captivating character. It's He, he plays the character of Sam Ace, Ace Rothstein, who's a Jewish-American gambling ex, expert handicapper who's asked by the Chicago mob to oversee the day-to-day casino and hotel operations at the Tangiers Casino in Vegas. It's it, 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 so the, the leading characters are Pesci. Okay. Joe Pesci. Yep. Yeah. Um, who's a made man and a friend of Sam and Ginger. And that's Sharon Stone. Okay. Who's a street wise chip hustler whom Sam marries and has a daughter with. And a lot of the plot is, is it revolves around their crumbling relationship and, and they have some epic fights that are, I mean, they're sort of entertaining. Um, but just the, I just say, I recommend it because De Niro plays this character so well. It's incredible to me. Is this a long movie? Yes. Like three hours. I'm going to say it's, let me see if it, it says on here. It, it is a long movie. It's it, a Scorsese movie. It you surprises know. me that you have seen that long of a movie that many times. Figure this out. 178 minutes. So that's just th- about three hours. Yeah, it's long. Two hours and 58 minutes. Yeah, it's a long. It's quite a commitment when you watch it on TV. And you've committed to that. I'd say seven, no, seven to ten. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, seven yeah, to ten. Yeah, TV, that's like almost five hours probably on TV. Yeah, I cannot. Hours. I find that when it's on, I can't not watch it. Like, it's one of those movies. I would say if you said simple, what are your favorite movies at age 57? I'd say American Made in Casino. Those are it. Those are my favorites. Those are my favorites. American Made for sure and Casino for sure. Right? Kim? Yeah. The leading actors in both of them. Well, De Niro's a stud, obviously. And Joe Pesci's a stud. Right. And in American Made. And Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise, incredible yeah. in that movie. Tom Cruise is in a lot of great movies. Yeah, Tom Cruise in American Made is, I just think it just doesn't get much better for an actor. Texas says, Jake, have you not seen Casino? No, I have not. <laughs> I haven't seen, I've seen a lot of good movies. I've not seen Casino, though. You I, and I, Elizabeth. I'm, I'm aware of Casino. You and Elizabeth would enjoy that together. Well, we might watch that at some point here soon. You and Elizabeth would enjoy Casino. It's not, it's not. 
wildly inappropriate. It's not family fair, um, but it's not. It's it's fine. It was on TV yesterday, Jake. Aaron says, uh, great movie, Sip, one of my favorites. Any mob movie, and I'm all for watching. I'm pretty good with mob movies, but some are better than others. And I'm just saying in this case, a lot of it's just De Niro and Pesci are at – I just think they're at their best. Pesci's really good I in it, Joe too. Pesci. Yeah, Pesci's really good in this movie. Pesci – not good, though, in this movie in terms of his loyalty to his friend. Bad. Bad. Uh, someone says, I need to watch the uncensored version because somebody says uh, in one scene there's a guy who gets his head put into a device and squeezed until his it, you know, eyeball. It's not perfect family fair. Pops out. Yeah, it's not perfect family fair. If you like Goodfellas, you're going to love it. I've never seen Goodfellas either. Oh, Jake. This, is, this segment is revealing in, in, in what you haven't seen. I have seen No Country for Old Men. Thank you, Texture. I've seen that one. Casino. That's an incredible movie. No Country for Old Men would make my top five. Andrew says uh, Casino is an all-time great. I always catch myself watching The Fugitive when it's on TV also. Okay. yeah, the, It's like a book you can't put down, Jake, if you, if you get into Casino. You just can't put it down. Uh, David says, David from Renew Your Auto says, Jake, you are disappointing me with, with not having seen Goodfellas. Casino or Goodfellas. Or Goodfellas. That's surprising. I haven't seen either of them. Well, you would do well to see both. And I guarantee you, you would like Goodfellas. I don't know if I guarantee, I just know you. I, I don't know if I guarantee you like Casino. I think I'd like Casino. Okay. I like, I like De Niro. I like Pesci. I like that, that kind of storyline. It's a good story. Interesting to me. Oh, it's a really, really well done movie. Yes. Really well done. Um. Okay. Uh, well done. A lot of support for you in this one. Yeah. Good support there. By the way, before we get to the game show, uh, Sanderson has chimed back in. He says he's watching the Masters. Sandy. He's, uh, where'd he go? Did you got to play the music? No. He said, Jake, uh, he said, I just turned on the Masters, and you are right. Jason Day should be thrown off the golf course for that outfit. I got, now I really want to see it. It is ridiculous. Can't you begin to describe it? This is something I could see. Um, a high school person wearing is trying to make a statement. Probably, it's just very <laughs> odd. It's a ugly. It's a massive. It's it's a sweater that's too big, and it just has writing on it. That's pretty good. It, like, it's just terrible in terms of condemnation. That's pretty strong. Like I'm just telling. In if a comparison, we made fun of Kurt Kenyama with his hoodie. Uh-huh. That looks like it's a wonderful sweater vest versus what Jason Day is wearing. <laughs> Looks very appropriate compared to what Jason Day has on. You've piqued my interest. If you have not seen, I, I've seen it all over Twitter. Now. If you want to go to X and just type in Jason Day, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll see the picture or the video. He, it, it is hideous what he's wearing. There's times to make statements in clothing, and this is not one of them. Well, Jason you're not. Day. You're you're not overly judgmental about clothing. No, I don't care typically, no. but this is like what I mean, what is he wearing? Yeah, I'm people I, have said is this some sort of sick prank that he's wearing this oh actual God. sweater? Okay, so now wait a second. You described it as a high schooler looking for attention. Someone else described it as a sick prank. <laughs> right. At that point you probably need to reevaluate what you're doing. And that's the a, kind of descriptions you're getting. I just got a text and it was of him swinging. I, no, I want the front side of like with an actual view of his t shirt. Of his sorry, not t shirt of the of the sweater he has mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. It is a sweater. Mm-hmm. It's just horrible. Mm. So I'm going to say. So, mm. all right. That's uh, Bill's Thrills, a.k.a. Sips Tips, a.k.a. Jake's Take, sponsored by Dirk, Scott, and Ty at Mid Plains Advisors, the oh. ATMs, the Cash Cows, and Lincoln. Are you seeing it now? You know who came through for us? Who? Greg? Myrtle Beach? Oh, no. Bustler and Buster in David City. Yeah, now you I'm see the seeing it. Yeah, that. yeah, that looks like a joke. <laughs> it looks like an absolute it looks like someone's playing a trick Let on it. Let me see, make sure it's the right one. Yeah, that's what is what is that? What is he wearing? No. It's horrible. It's horrible. Jason Day, you, you deserve to miss the cut wearing that sweater. Thanks, Buster. Thank you, Buster. Buster and David City with a good photo. Office TV. Can I give you one last plug before we get to the game show? Please. Speaking of David City, yeah. yesterday. Uh, Marty Roper came in from David City. Marty Roper. He owns a place called uh, Salt Mine City Brewing. Okay. In David City. Okay. And I got some beers if you want some in the back. He brought in, they have 30 different beers they brew at Salt Mine really? City. Where's this at? David, David City. It's I know, downtown. Where? Downtown? It's downtown. Really? He said they're going to close it soon and, and build a new building. So it's bigger in David City. 
I'll be but dark. they have 30 types of beers. He brought in a beer that was an American lager. I mean, this had no bitter taste at all. I'll take some of it. I will give you one. It yeah. was incredible. Give me two. He also had a, an Irish ale also, which was excellent. Okay, I like tried the Vienna one. lager. Tried to, you know, I don't like IPAs. I told, I told Marty, I'm not drinking the IPA. But the other stuff was incredible. If you find yourself on the way to Columbus or in the David City area, mm-hmm. holy crap, please stop. At Salt Mine City. Yeah, just so you Amazing know, place. Whenever I go to Columbus, I always go to David City. Okay, well, route. stop by yeah. for a beer yeah. at Salt Mine City. I'll be done. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Thank you for that. You're welcome. All right, let's play the game show. Give us a call right now at 464-568. Five, your chance to win a business box of bagels to Bagels and Joe. You know, it's Masters Week, so why would we not on a film Friday do some golf movies? Golf movie trivia. Great. Great. What else would we do on a film Friday yeah. at Masters? So, no, that makes sense. If you think you know your golf movies, please give us a call right now at 402-464-5685. Shut up, Simple. Starts right now. We've all been there. You're listening to the radio, and then that rage starts to grow inside of you. It starts to consume you. It gets to a point where you just want to yell, Shut up, Simple! <clears throat> no, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, here's your chance. It's time to shut up, Sipple. Call now to play. 464-5685. Shut up, Sipple. Brought to you by Bagels and Joe. According to the grease board, you have already had a losing week. You're one in three this week after two straight four and one weeks in the game show. Yeah, this week got away from me. You didn't have Bill for four shows this week. You had him Monday. I think you still lost on Monday. This week got away from me. I got, I got bucked off the bowl. Right, get back on the pole. Get back hey, on okay, the pole, Jake. Yep. Help me out. Get on, back on the pole. All, right. All right, we got Josh. Josh, how do you feel about golf movies today on this film Friday? Uh, pretty decent. This is, yeah, this is not producer Josh. This is, this is caller Josh. Producer Josh took the call. So, I understand how that works, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> making sure you know that. <laughs> yeah. Josh, sure are aware of that. Josh, he's I'm on the, the phone. I'm the guy that brought in honey for you oh, guys. Please bring it back. That was delightful, Josh. Oh, my God. The honey we had Josh? a couple months ago. It was yeah. really good. Josh, stop by any time. You don't have to bring anything. Just stop by. Stop by. I can but that, that. honey's good, though. Yeah, I like that honey. All right, Josh, first question to you. Bill uh, Bill is not here, so it's just you and Sip. Mono we mono again. For <laughs> Put him up. Nice question. All right. Put him up. Josh, what is the name of the golf course in Caddyshack? <laughs> That's a beautiful sound. Good start there. Oh. Let's just go with Whispering Pines. That's a guess. Sip, I would encourage you to not take this one. <laughs> Wait a second, though. Josh, I appreciate that. You, he named, see, I appreciate the guess. Just went for a guess. Though. Yeah, Whispering Pines. <laughs> no, I'm passing. I saw somebody wearing a shirt with this the other day. Uh, Bushwood Country Club. <laughs> Bushwood. You have to know that movie to get that one right. Yeah, funny. All right, Sip. Um, first question to you: okay. zero zero tie. What is Kevin Costner's character name in Tin Cup? Ace. That's not it. Do you want that one or not? Yeah, I'll take it. It's uh, Rory McIlroy. Matt, yeah. <laughs> Roy McAvoy. Roy, not Rory McIlroy, but Roy McAvoy. Are you sure you want to give that to him? Yes. It's close enough. No, he got that one. Okay. He's on that one. Josh, I'm with, I'm with Jake on that. All right. For the uh, for the win, your last question, Josh. What actor plays the lead role of amateur golfer Francis we met in the 2005 golf movie, The Greatest Game Ever Played? That uh, Shiloh Buff. Brilliant. Shia LaBeouf is correct, and you are never going to win today, Sip. You had a buzzsaw in Josh. Josh, congrats. You're getting bagels. Thanks for bringing in honey. And we, you deserve bagels for that in, in general. So good job today. Well done. We'll get you bagels. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great Friday. You too, Thank Josh. You enjoy the Masters. And shut up, Sip. Um, there we go. Congratulations on the new baby, Jake. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Josh. We'll see. Hopefully, we'll learn some time today or tomorrow. But uh, tiebreaker, you want that one? Yes. Okay. You lost the year. By the way, one in four week for you. Great. In trivia. That's great. Chevy Chase was one of the stars in Caddyshack. How old is Chevy Chase? Chevy Chase right now. Yes. Um, 
Chevy Chase must be 75. Not a bad guess. He's actually 80. Ooh. He's 80 years old. Chevy Chase He's is 80 old. years old. Okay, He's so aging. really in that game, what I was trying to do and what happened is good. I got out of there without being embarrassed. It's kind of like when Nebraska played. What year was it when Nebraska went out to USC with Bill Callahan? Mm. And they they basically played not to get two thousand six, five or six, 2005 or six. 2005 or six. I always remember it was that 28 game. to 10. It was a boring yeah. game. Was, yeah. yeah. They, but Nebraska played it um, not to get embarrassed. And I kind of played that game. I was just hoping not to get embarrassed. Did you get embarrassed? It was a 2-0 loss. No, I, I don't feel like I was embarrassed. I didn't, I didn't say anything overly stupid. Okay. All right. Yeah, he didn't take a guess in the golf no. course, which is good. No, and, and there wasn't any obvious one that I missed that you would say, how do you not get that? I don't even think Ace was a bad guess. You went yeah. right away, Ace. No, yeah. it's not it. So so we're all right. I got yeah. out of there without it being embarrassed as much as Nebraska did at USC that year, whatever that year that was. And, and I'm not being disparaging about it. I think it was 06 because 07 they came to Lincoln and crushed Nebraska. I think that's right. Yeah, that no, – oh, well, I mean, the 07 game was crushing to Bill's program. To Callahan's program, it was it. Well, Bill would tell you himself that Nebraska didn't really recover from that. It didn't really recover. They almost lost to Ball State that right. year. Yeah, they, they gave them seventy six points to Kansas that year. USC is. I would say real quickly before we get to break, that USC game in two thousand seven was a prime example of a game that can ruin your season. There are games that can ruin your season. You got to be careful about that. And that game wrecked Nebraska because they, they got mauled physically, Jake. They got they, mauled. When they put up 70 points in K-State, though, it was a very odd year. There's mostly downs, a couple ups, and that was it. The spillover is next on Early Break on the Ticket. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM for 93.7 The Ticket. You're listening to Early Break with Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen, and Bill Bush on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. At Weedman Lawn Care, the term care in our name is more than part of our title. It's the heart of our company culture. If we don't care and support our team members, how can we expect them to care for you and your lawn? As evidenced by Weedman's five-star reviews online, we consistently show our sincere care for our customers' needs. And we absolutely care for the communities we serve by donating to local schools, baseball fields, food banks, and the Ronald McDonald House. Go to Weedman.com now. Our caring culture will give your family the lawn it deserves. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at gainatrucking.com. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. NIPCO is hiring CDL drivers for Ready Mixed Concrete, Husker Concrete, and Beatrice Concrete. NEBCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEBCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEBCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. It's officially one of the greatest weeks of the year on the sports calendar, Masters Week. Book your tee time today with friends, family, or coworkers at Double Eagle Golf inside the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. Doors open at 10 a.m. from Thursday to Sunday, and they'll have food directly from Augusta National, like pimento cheese sandwiches, Georgia pecan caramel popcorn, and lots more. Plus specialty drinks to get you in the mood for the greatest golf tournament in the world. Book a bay today at doubleeagle.golf. 
If you're in Seward or Milford, listen up. Select Plumbing is now servicing your area with no trip charges from Lincoln. Select Plumbing works on a variety of issues for your home and business, including general plumbing, water heaters, faucet fixture repair, underground sewer and water repairs, backflow testing, and more. Keep your property free from leaks and other issues. Call today for a free estimate, 402-560-6197. It's not just Lincoln, Waverly, and the surrounding area anymore. It's also Seward and Milford with no trip charges. Contact Select Plumbing to inquire at 402 402- 560-6197. Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fear's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fear's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. Community means something different to everyone, but for me, it means cheering on those around you during the good times and helping them out during the tough times. I'm softball player Jordy Ball, and I've been blessed with the support of my friends, family, coaches, and community throughout my life. When looking for a bank to call home, it was easy to choose Midwest Bank. I never feel like just another customer, and they're proud to support their communities. They love what they do, and it shows. Your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Liberty Law Group is committed to the defense of your liberty in pursuit of your justice for those that have been injured. My name is Matt Knight, attorney with Liberty Law Group. If you've been injured in an accident that wasn't your fault, call 877-42-LIBERTY. Our relentless trial attorneys are committed to the highest quality legal representation. At Liberty Law Group, we will fight for you. Call 877-42-LIBERTY. Once again, that's 877-42-LIBERTY. The need in our community, if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can. With 12 bowling lanes in the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. We're on the air. Back. Well, party's starting early today, isn't it? To more of Early Break with Sip and Jay. Brought to you by Gaina Trucking. <laughs> On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. <laughs> It is time for the Ooh. spillover with Raf and AD on this Ooh. Friday. Is it, hot? Is it too, too loud? There we go. It's That's better. Sponsored by Computer Hardware. Seventy the no-go see trip today for all your Apple product needs. Also in Carney, Hastings, and GI. Gentlemen, the Masters is rolling, and it is beautiful conditions today after a rough start yesterday. How much did you watch yesterday? Just be, on, be a, honest. A lot, if it's a lot, a lot just tell a lot. us. Didn't Did you miss guys very watch much. a lot? Didn't miss very much. Didn't miss no. very much. I think I missed Tiger's first hole. <laughs> That's yeah. it? Yeah. Hey, he birdied that hole. Yeah, I didn't. He just popped your laptop up. 
Look at the screen, look at the screens and just go to work. I'm fascinated by stuff like this because you guys, I never even think about sitting down and watching. Oh, yeah. I watched some of it. And I don't, I'm not judging. It's just interesting how different people are. Yes. I mean, we do have a cigar. I mean, it's not boring. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs> suggesting boring. I'm just suggesting interesting. Pound out emails and watch golf. Is that yeah, right? I can still that's, work and watch. Oh, I yeah, still, I still get my laptop. Yeah. I just work and yeah, still I used, watch it. I used to work with a young man, Parker Gabriel, who was a grinder, but he'd have the Brewers on on his computer next yep. to his work computer. You can multitask. Yeah. Wisconsin native Parker Gabriel. Yeah, Nuclearis yeah. native. You can Parker multitask. Gabriel. We used to come on these airwaves all the time. He's a great friend, and he was one of the best I've ever seen, but he'd always have the Brewers on. Right. So, when's the last time you golfed? Oh, I know who this was. Was it with you? It was time? with me. Yeah, Jake. that long ago. Jake's gonna have to answer this. That's the well, only time I've played in probably seventeen years. I believe it was in twenty twenty at one point in the summer. Yep. Summer twenty twenty. We one played, time we played Jim Ager, and yes. he had, he had not played for fifteen years prior to that. Right. He said, "Wow." And I gotta, I gotta tell you this: his swing was 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 solid. Just butter. I said, "You have you've got some skill here." Yeah, you give it a play. chance. I played as a kid. He has a hole in one on his record. He's got a hole in one. Hit a hole in one at, at the Columbus Country Club, Elks Country Club. And oh yeah, that's a good course, by the way. Sip is one of those guys that we grew up with. It didn't matter what sport it was. They were pretty good at it. Mm, not very good just, football. We just pick it up. <laughs> not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Quick on a basketball court, <laughs> slow on a football field. It's, uh-huh. it's that's the way that works sometimes. Yeah. Like people will be like the coaches, other coaches at Columbus would be like, "You got to play football, sip. You'll be super good. You'll, you're fast." But I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm quick on a basketball court, not fast. <laughs> not fast on a football field. It's different. It's different." Sip, sip is just the rain man, a man of many talents. Yeah, it's all over the place. I really oh. don't have many talents. It just it it just really pisses me off. What I, I play? I'm a you know I'm a low handicapper. I play a lot of golf. I've never I live on a par three golf course. And I've <laughs> never had an ace, but you that does have one at me. the Elks, which is one of the best courses in yeah. the state in Columbus. Yeah. It surprised me if you haven't had an ace yet. I haven't had one. That does surprise I've me. I've hit the pin many times. I've been you've hit close. the pin many times. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I've, I've never COVID ace. I've never go, I've never had a COVID ace. I don't think even. <laughs> I'm not gonna count that. What's a COVID ace? They had the, the foam up on the on the pins, so you could they actually to touch the pin. Yeah, COVID eight. I didn't have me started on that. Give give us up a COVID eight. Don't even get me started. Why? What do you want to say? Oh, I'm, I'm I want to get you started. <laughs> so they said it. <laughs> first, it made you, sense. <laughs> if you touch like the the pump, the foam, the styrofoam, or the what was it? Yeah, the it's foam, styrofoam, basically. They you count it so. During COVID, you'd be hitting line drives. And the, <laughs> well, touched it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, guys, handicaps go down the record it's numbers. It's essentially a pool, uh, a pool floaty thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, was yeah. that yeah, right? It was. Yeah. It was a pool floaty. Oh God, that's so, weird. Tiger Woods again is uh, was is even par uh, in the first round. He's in the, on his 18th hole now, and they the second round is actually underway. They're playing the front nine, and then they're going to get the pins in the back nine changed when those guys are done. But Tiger's even par on his last hole today. Yep. Of the first round, still that is. Raph, I'm going to ask Raph this, and yes. AD, you can follow Raph. If you were going to the Nebraska scrimmage on Saturday, which you can't, we can't, none of nobody can. But if you're going to Nebraska scrimmage, what would, you, where would you train your eyes first? And maybe you could avoid the quarterback discussion. Yeah, I was going to say, the, what, no, but that's fine. What would you look for from the quarterbacks? I know one thing specifically. I would look for. You're a coach, Raph. I think I'd look for leadership. Mm, there you go. I think I'd look for leadership who's taken because I mean these are they're freshmen. So you, you we've seen it on defense. It looks like you know Isaac Gifford's kind of like that the quarterback of the defense. Nash. Nash. Ty. Those guys. So you've got those you've got those leaders. So I would want to see how are you know Dylan and Danny taking over taking over the offenses. Okay. Just being young because I think you can you can still be the leader of the offense being a freshman, but just seeing how how the early don't you have to be the leader of the offense? Well, unless you have like I know that you know there's been times where you'll have like an an older receiver that sort of takes control of it or somebody like that or a tight end. Like you could see like if Mahomes went down in Kansas City, Travis Kelsey would be the quarterback of that offense. <laughs> I mean, he wouldn't play quarterback, but yeah, he'd be no, the, I got the leader. He would be that leader. No, I got so, so I would I'd be interested to see who the leader of that offense is. If it's if it is, you know, a Banks, maybe Banks is that leader right yeah. now. So A D. You know, I, my eyes are gonna go <clears throat> right to the offensive line. Yep. I, I want to see protection. 
of course you need the quarterbacks, but I want to see you. I don't care who you get back, back there playing quarterback. If you can't protect, it's going to be a long season. Right. And obviously, and it's, if you it's can't run the ball. Yeah, it's only ball. spring. Right. But my eyes are going exa- right to the offensive line. And then what I'm looking at, I told Jake Inside earlier, out. I'm looking at picks. Are, are they throwing yeah. picks? I mean, are interceptions a problem? It defined, it largely defined last season. We could not have a season of Christmas. No, no more giving. Mm-hmm. We gave care. enough minus 17 in turnovers that you said sip last yeah, year. Yeah, minus 17. Yeah, minus 17. Minus 7. That's an yeah. ungodly number. And, and with, and with that, too, though, you got to remember, like Peyton Manning always says, every interception has a story. So sometimes these, receivers. Yeah, you, I want to make sure you know that it was on the quarterback. It wasn't, you know, on a receiver running the wrong route or something like that. Sometimes, but you know, Raph, no, you're right. Though, and, and, and that very point, <clears throat> and, and true, what Peyton said, what you said is true. Every, every interception has a story. We need to change the narrative. Yeah, exactly. Receivers need to know where the where the routes are going, where they're yeah. breaking off at. Quarterbacks got to know when to throw it away and live to another and live another day. One hundred. You know, we we've we've had way too many stories last year. Oh, Thirty two of them to be exact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You a know, lot of chapters. Thirty two. A lot of chapters. We That's wrote. I mean, it was like Atlas shrugged of yeah. bad stories. You know, of, of bad stories. We don't talk know? about. We talk about touchdown interception ratio nebraska's ratio was 10 touchdown passes 16 picks that good? that's unsightly i mean that's <laughs> that is, no, it's think about good. it oh, if goodness. a quarterback if a single quarterback has that mm-hmm. he doesn't make it to the next year no I mean, no so yeah they got it that's that's where i'm going first i'm watching picks and near picks even yeah, like, yeah. Like, just keep it out of trouble well the thing about it is those quarterbacks we've talked about this ad nauseum you guys as well as good as kalen and uh Ryle are the throws they made in high school, you're not getting away with the, a lot of those. Not a lot of them. At the right. D1 level. Not at the Big Ten. Uh, even no, just what our own team, you, Think about this. Here's why I do like the fact they're playing against our defense, because we have a dang good defense. Right. So they're going to get a, a quick snip that what's not going to fly across the Big Ten. You know what else is good? You know what I'm saying? Because yep. they're playing one of the good – listen, think about this. Our defense is one of the best in the nation last and year. And you know what else? It's complicated. It's very complicated. It is a complicated So defense. if they can do decent – well, against mm-hmm. our defense, oh yeah, I like our chances. Oh, that's a great. Point. I like our chances. It's a great. The defense really helps. Yep. God, it was interesting. I don't know, Jake. You might, may not have the sound, and it, it was. It was. It's sort of hard to even describe this this situation. But Donovan Rayola was asked about facing that defense. He clearly doesn't like it. Now he framed it up. <laughs> he doesn't. He framed it up and saying, "Oh, it's I love lot. it." It's he, a lot. He said, "Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it every day." But it was like, mm, no, you don't, do you? Because because you're being facetious here. He, 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 was, very, he was being yes. very sarcastic. Yes, it's, it's good to get pushed. It's Absolutely, it, pushed. it, it, it helps to see those exotic looks. Like even um, Coach Rule brought up Wink Martindale and being the new defense coordinator at Michigan and how he runs out of different. And he's talked when they were at Carolina. If you could go against, I mean, Wink's been at the Ravens. He's been all. I was at the Broncos for a while, but. If you can go against that defense and pick up those blitz protections against that defense, mm-hmm. you can pick them up against anyone. Yeah, same. So it's got to be the same at Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Tony White's known for the exotic blitzes, bringing people you know off the edges, bringing you know different people. So mm-hmm. that'll help Nebraska in the long run when oh, the season well. starts. And White, the thing about this helps out the quarterbacks too. Those guys will sometimes change right before the ball snapped. Yeah. So yeah. what you just saw prior to looking down and looking because they're always looking at that safety where that safety is going a lot of times. Sometimes he'll change it like. At the drop of a hat, for Kalen and Ryola to see that daily, hopefully, you would think would pay dividends yeah. during, during the season. I think it will. Yeah. It, it, and Rule has talked about, you guys hear him, that those guys flip protections. Mm-hmm. Those freshmen flip protections yes. at the line of scrimmage. Yes. They're smart guys. Smart Jake, guys. before well, you – no, no, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. This uh-huh. could be the last sign out with you with the empty house. <laughs> could be. Could yeah. be. Jake, let me ask you this, man. How, how are you feeling? Um – it's a combo of excited and nervous. Like it probably should be. Yeah. But excited to see, you know, this next phase of life, next stage of life, but also how is it going to go? You never know. I'm going to tell you this as a father of three, 25 years old, 23 years old. Jeez, you're an old man. And yeah, I am. And I nine. thought you were only 29. Yeah, a little nine, nine. She'll be 20 this month. You'll figure it out. You know, some people come with all this, you know, great advice. And that's cool, but I'm just going to say. I don't do that. You're never as prepared. You're never yeah. prepared because it's something you've never done before. But you. And Elizabeth will figure it out. Yeah, and if if you don't, Elizabeth will. Yeah, yep. that's right. Yeah, yeah, Because that first that first kid, man, you're taking a billion pictures. Mm-hmm. You don't let him touch anything dirty. <laughs> like Nia was eating gum out of the dirt yeah. in the street by the time she came. And you've always got <laughs> she's you've always got Uncle Sip. I got Uncle Sip. Yeah, I got Uncle, Uncle Sip. Sip. Yeah, yeah I'm Sip. there. I'm yeah. there to baby. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, if I'm not here next week, you know why. And Nick will take over. <laughs>
But I appreciate, guys, I appreciate the advice, Just enjoy yeah. it, God man. bless you, Be Jake. in the moment and enjoy it, brother. All right, guys. God well, bless you. It's Ryan with Raf, AD, and AG is next for Steve Sipple and Bill Bush. I am Jake Sorensen. I will see you probably in two weeks, but you guys are back Monday. See ya. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. 